Hi, my name is Orsh Mikic and welcome to the Great Design Lead Podcast. Currently, I'm the founder and CEO of the Flow Ninja Agency and uh, we right now we're helping enterprises realize their ideas faster with Webflow. Perfect. That's that was probably the first time yeah. like <laughs> we can't record and then you got it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously this is like the first in-person one with video that I've ever done. So thank you for being such a good host. No worries. And being so nice to me. <laughs> no worries. Hopefully the video is going to turn out so good so that yeah. you can continue using it every single time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Like, um, I know that everybody on Spotify will, will be able to see it. So yeah. I'm excited about that. I'm the I'm the guy that always watches, uh, I mean, all the podcasts with the video on. I have no idea why, but I cannot yeah. turn on my headphones and listen to something. Yeah. I always sit and like, I usually watch on YouTube and I, I watch the, the podcast. I somehow can feel and understand people a lot better that way. So... It's good that we're gonna have it this this way. Yeah, I, I started watching. Um, I, I started listening to podcasts when I was a little kid, and I always thought it was really cool to like, really get to know somebody, um, really well, um, without ever really seeing their face. So you all of a sudden you have like this really close, like intimate connection with somebody, and then you kind of have an idea of what they look like, but you're not really quite sure. And then you Google them, and you're totally wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hate about, I mean, the uh, fiction books or whatever, like, because you have everything uh, in your head and then you watch a movie and you're like, really? <laughs> Is this actually looking like this? Or they like, describe them in the book and then they like deliberately, they're like, no, she doesn't have red hair. She yeah. has blonde hair. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? why? <laughs> so true. But yeah, I, I mean, um, I, this is like also the first time I've ever done a podcast uh, overseas. So obviously from my voice, everybody knows I'm American. Um, but for my voice, everybody's <laughs> going to understand I'm from Serbia. So yeah. hopefully the English is going to be as good too, uh, for everybody to understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're totally fine. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, so obviously when I do podcasts with people, it's like about their life and um, getting to know them as a person. And my favorite question to start off with is always like when you were a little kid and somebody asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? What would you have answered? Well, that was probably heavily influenced by my parents. So I would maybe say that I wanted to be a doctor or something like that, just because my father is working at healthcare. Mm. So like that would be my first answer ever. But I actually went to the middle school. I, I was a pharmacist in the middle school, like because of my parents. Oh, yeah. So like my dad told me you're going to go to Greece with your friends if you go to kind of the medical school. Yeah. And I had like 99 points out of 100 on the final test. And then I went to the pharmacy school and I was also programming at a time on the other side. So I actually kind of tested that a little bit and then realized it's, it's not for me, definitely. Really? Yeah. Well, um, what kind of interest did you have as like a little kid? So I felt, I feel I'm in games because I, my parents told me that they bought me a computer when I was four, year, four years old. Yeah. So I basically learned English like as my first language and then uh, like Latinitsa in Serbian, we have Chigalitsa and Latinitsa. Okay. Two different ways of writing things. Uh, so I first learned Latinitsa, which is basically uh, English words and like kind of writing in English and oh. only then writing in Serbian because I had to figure out how to play the games, how to <laughs> crack the games and download them from the internet. So like that's how I went into the whole IT sphere, like from a pretty young age, I think so. So uh, I, I guess um, uh, for like English speakers, that's like the difference between Latin and Cyrillic. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the difference, it's basically a whole like different alphabet. So like, you know, like the, the, you have Abeceda, which is Cyrillic, and then you have the alphabet mm -hmm. and every single letter is like different. Like it's basically like with Russian and like English or whatever, but like we have uh, our own way of writing words and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I think we're the only, I think people who can write in two different ways of letters and understand both Latin and so yeah because every single word in serbian is actually read out the, the same way you write it out so you can pretty easily like write it in any language and understand it yeah yeah i know that there's a um isn't there there was a person who wrote um like oh, the person who put the alphabet together yeah like it makes it super easy so like what you see is actually like how it sounds yeah yeah, yeah. not you don't have like things in english like uh knife with a k yeah, yeah. <laughs> or door or, like when you have two o's you read it like this when you yeah. have it like this so yeah i mean basically whatever you like when you understand serbian whatever you hear is what you write yeah so like i don't know if you go patike you you write like like every single word like one and every single letter one by one and that's how you read it and that's it yeah i don't know that's what's I like that. <laughs> yeah, much easier. You don't have spelling or anything like that. That's just a word you'll read out and that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I um some of my friends who came to the US and uh 
grew up speaking other languages um they would come up to, to me and they're like emily what's up with all these like double letters and like this is so stupid why do you have letters that like don't even they don't even need to be there and like this is so dumb and i'm like oh, okay thanks <laughs> and do you know any other languages on your side um uh in in high school i learned french um and it was really funny because my french teacher um he knew that most of us weren't going to remember anything after graduation graduating but he said that um it was important that we at least had one thing and so every day for two years monsieur raymond would make us recite uh on sandwich au beurre de cacahuete et confiture which means peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> So I know how to ask for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's probably your favorite meal when you go. <laughs> they don't have, I don't think I don't think they have peanut butter there. Or it's like it's not a popular thing. Probably not yeah. a popular thing. Like in, in Europe when like the peanut butter and jelly is the thing we saw in American movies. Yeah. So like that's the thing like when you eat it as a kid, I saw that in a movie, I'm gonna try that. It's never <laughs> something that is actually a part of the culture. Like your mom is like looking at you, what what are you doing? First of all, what is peanut butter? And like the second of all, why are you writing jelly on top of that? So. Yeah. I remember somebody uh, when he came to the, the U.S., um, uh, he said, uh, hey, mom, like, I want Lunchables. And his mom was like, what's Lunchables? He's like, I don't really know. <laughs> the little, like, uh, pre-made meal thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We don't have that here. You just get money and you purchase things, like, when you're at school and that's how you go to school. Yeah. You don't bring food from, from your home. Yeah. So so you uh, grew up speaking uh, English and Serbian, yeah. like just from games and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I actually have uh, zero classes of English in my kind of... Really? Yeah, like all of my kind of friends or whatever, they were going to private English classes so they can learn English. Yeah. And like I was always, I mean, the kid everybody hated the most because I knew all of the English words and everything like that. Oh, really? And the teacher is like, okay, we're, so now, now you go silent a little bit. Let the, other, <laughs> let, the, let the other kids talk a little bit. So it's fun that I was able to learn all the English words and everything like that without any uh, coaching or like private classes or anything like that. How did that feel in school? Uh, pretty good because I could be <laughs> cocky at English classes. Everybody's like, how can you do this? I'm like, and it's just like that. Like, how do you not understand it? <laughs> but it's also pretty, I mean, maybe annoying to other people because I don't know maybe the technical parts of English. I like by feeling because I learned it at a young age. Yeah. I just know that it's like that. So when, when I have to explain to somebody why is it like that, I have no idea. Like, it's just like that. Like, you write it like that and that's it. And that's, that's how I learned everything, basically. That's probably the best way to learn it. Because when I ever try to explain why I say certain things, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but because it's your native language, I guess. Yeah. Uh, like, from that perspective, it's going to be pretty hard to explain. And that's why I'm trying, like, uh, my, my nephew, my brother's son, like, I'm trying to, that he learns as many languages as he can by, I think, fifth fifth year yeah because you can learn the Spanish languages and they're not gonna get, get messed up in yeah. your head like by there so like he's understanding English already he's he speaks Serbian so we're, wow. like, we're gonna try to crush some more languages <laughs> to him like by the age of, by the age of five what's at the top of your list for him uh I like I don't know I I like Greek <laughs> but that's, I'm not gonna <laughs> learn that for sure it's because it's a pretty place yeah it's, a pretty place. <laughs> it's pretty close by to Serbia I can drive with a car like we go often three or four times a year we go to Greece because wow. you can drive five hours to there and get back that's what my girlfriend knows she, she's trying to learn uh, like to teach me that but every single time when I when I go to Greece I mess up all of the words I say goodbye instead of hi and everybody's like kind of what <laughs> what are you doing uh but i mean there's also french and german which are also pretty interesting so we'll see but yeah. we like nobody from our side actually knows the third language so really? it's gonna be pretty hard to <laughs> teach him anything after that but it's a good idea i was talking to this one guy and he was, he was saying like he uh he speaks he speaks cantonese and english and i think he, one more language that like his family speaks and then he's like yeah like i feel like i don't know enough and i <laughs> as an american i was just sitting there like really yeah. <laughs> three isn't enough for you <laughs> yeah, but it's also in europe because there is a kind of really rich culture and everything like when you go to like for example france or italy and you actually speak their language everybody's gonna be oh and they're gonna yeah. host you in a much different way yeah like even like when you say thank you in greek or whatever like in greek they're gonna be wow and they're, they're gonna <laughs> give you free drinks or something free to eat or whatever so it's yeah. always a fun trick to have in your sleeve when you travel abroad like even when you go to like, let's say later today, we're probably going to go to a Serbian restaurant. Yeah. If you order chevapi or something like that, yeah. they're probably going to be treating you completely different <laughs> because they you, they know that you're from a different place. Yeah, yeah. I uh, 
Um, it, I do like that sometimes the menus, though, here, they have an English side yeah. and a Serbian side. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but you, you cannot translate Chivapi. That's our traditional drink. Yeah. So it's like Chivapi in English, Chivapi in Serbian. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> what is it exactly? Uh, yeah, it's meat. Basically, have usually it's ground beef, but with some specific uh, seasonings. Uh, with uh, yeah, a lot of specific season seasonings, and it has yeah. a really specific taste in the end. And sometimes it can be like pork and also uh, ground beef, and like uh, like I don't think anywhere in the world you have a, a specific uh, kind of taste like that. Yeah, because it seems like that it's easy, but only here, like you can eat something that has the, that that taste. Really? Yeah. What? How, how many places have you traveled to in the world? Uh, I guess a lot. I've been to, I guess I've, I've I've been to Greece. I've been to London. I've been to Lithuania, and I mean, like when you go to the Balkans, you 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 can just add up countries like Macedonia, <laughs> uh, uh, Bulgaria. You can go Croatia. Uh, then you have Austria, Germany, and uh, I I went to the UAE. That's Dubai. I went to Africa, and wow. <laughs> Uh, the list can go on and on. I feel like that's that's the thing that things that I remember at the moment and that are maybe on top of the list. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to go to. I, I haven't been to Italy actually, so like yeah. I want to go there. So like that's Italy and Spain are the two countries that I've never been to that I want to go to. Hopefully by the end of the year. Wow. Yeah. Um. Uh. U.S. Canada Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the the great thing about living in Europe is like you have flights for fifty bucks, a hundred euros, or whatever. So like you can just try travel to anywhere you want to for a pretty cheap, uh, cheap price. So like it's not a big cost. Like yeah. the I mean the air travel, like you from US when you go to the plane, you're gonna be what is this? Yeah, <laughs> because it feels like a bus that goes and like lands, and then you're like that's it. But, an Airbus. Yeah, an Airbus. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. I mean, you can go anywhere. Like the flights are one and a half, two hours, and like you you fly pretty cheap. Yeah. You pay for everything you bring on, like you pay for your extra luggage, you pay for the luggage downstairs, you pay yeah. for food, you pay for drinks, but it's good. Like if you want to go on budget, it's the best thing. I mean, I'd love to take a, a plane ride for a hundred bucks. Yeah. That would be, that'd be a first for no, me. <laughs> you can, uh, the, the lowest amount you have is like uh, for 20 bucks one way. Like the, because like, for example, Ryanair has a lot of, uh, I mean, discounts like yeah. for a specific date for a specific place. And they market that everywhere. Yeah. And probably, I guess, a lot of other people buy for different days because that doesn't like doesn't that that, that that doesn't fit in. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, if you buy smart, like, you can travel the world on a pretty but pretty low budget, specifically Europe. Uh -huh. Anything apart from Europe, like, it becomes pretty expensive. Yeah. Even um, uh, I remember looking at the flights from uh, New York to Florida, and they're more expensive than <laughs> <laughs> within Europe. <laughs> I haven't been. I haven't been to the U.S. any like uh, uh, any time, so yeah. I'll have to come down and visit and see how the air travel is there. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. I'm not sure. I'm I'm scared about security. That's the thing that I'm scared no. about the most. I mean, yeah. from the movies, you always see like when you land in US that every every security is gonna be strict. Yeah. And probably as for coming from Europe, is gonna be you probably are not feeling the same treatment as yeah. we flying from Europe to the US are gonna have. Yeah. It's um. Uh, I remember a story. Uh, um. Lazar, my my boyfriend. He uh the first time he came to the US, he had like a sandwich in his uh, backpack. And when he got there, the American TSA, they were like freaking out. They got a hazmat suit on. They yeah. were like, what is this? And he's like, it's a sandwich. He's like, can I eat it? And like, no, how do you even get it? <laughs> so sometimes they're just over dramatic, yeah. um, but that's fine. <laughs> he, he got through it and he was fine. <laughs> Who knows what he could brought in like, with a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so uh, when, when we go back to kind of like the age that you were like, uh, playing English speaking video games yeah. and stuff like that. Um, what what kind of kid were you? Like, what kind of if you were to describe yourself uh, of, like in third person? I would probably say a nerd because I was playing a lot of video games. I know one of the favorite video games, like first was Counter Strike one point six, and then after that I played League of Legends. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I mean, hanging out with my friends was, uh, I mean, five of us being on Skype together because we yeah. had our own team. Yeah. And then basically for ten hours a day we would play games and then <laughs> go out play basketball for two or three hours just to regroup and plan out what we're gonna do. And then when my parents go to sleep, I continue playing games more. Really? So like, that was basically my day, and like I was obsessed with video games and doing stuff like that. And I actually had a YouTube channel. I I saw that on two thousand twelve. Really? I shut that down so nobody go actually <laughs> receive that. So that's all like private. I was like, videos. how did I miss that? Yeah. 
<laughs> so I had one of the first YouTube channels for recording video games. Like I was recording me playing uh, League of Legends. Really? I had a really bad laptop. So like it was really laggy and like the quality was pretty bad. And then like kind of going over characters, talking in Serbian for characters and stuff like that. So really? I tried out going business, going into business when I was pretty young, I guess. Like yeah. that was one of the first things I've done. And then I was earning, like, I was the kid that had all of the skins in League of Legends because I post <laughs> YouTube videos and tell people, like, if they sign up with this link, they're going to get free, I mean, free points to buy skins. Yeah. But in the return, I just, I get some I mean, free points. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I basically had all of the skins and stuff like that. Really? And it was a pretty, like, pretty good feeling to, to be <laughs> the only kid that has all of the skins for all the characters in League of Legends. You're prepared of yourself at that yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I, I don't know, like 12, 13, something like that. Yeah. So I'm like probably maybe even like younger than that. So that's when I tried, like, uh, I did not know that that was at that young age. Like recently I was showcasing to everybody in the team. So everybody like makes fun of me and like, he's laughing when they see that really? video <laughs> because it's that really, really young voice and like crackling, like not Aww. knowing how to say anything or whatever, and then trying to go over characters. So it's a, it's, it's a fun thing to see. <laughs> how do you feel now? Like um looking back on that kind of like oh wow that's who i used to be yeah that was my life <laughs> i'm like kind of why wasn't i continuing to do so because uh i mean at that point like when i started to play video games there were a lot of youtubers like youtube was just kind of maybe starting out that were having those houses where they live in the house and just play video games so like with my five friends like that for the closest that was our dream life Really? Okay, we're going to play games, <laughs> somebody's going to sponsor us to buy a house, and we're yeah. going to play video games in that house for the whole day. And that's that was our dream life, and nothing more can kind of cross that. No money, nothing, like just playing video games for the full day. Um, how do you think uh, um, you would have reacted at that age? Like, oh, my dream is to uh, be a, I don't know, a gamer in a house. And you're like, well, this is how my life went. How do you think you would have responded? <laughs> At that age, I would yeah. probably be like, kind of, why are you bothered with all of this stuff? <laughs> like, you could just have five friends and just kind of not be worried about the whole world or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm pretty proud. Maybe that was a good thing to have because I did not, like at a young age, I did not chase money or anything like that. That was more of kind of imagine being able to be in a house with five of my best friends and just kind of play yeah. around for a whole day. So it at that point, looking at it now, it, it was a pretty good thinking. But the kids talking to me right now would be what a dork. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wakes up, goes to the gym, goes to the <laughs> office, doesn't drink over the week, only on the weekends. Yeah. So goes to the sauna, trains and whatever. So like it's uh, yeah. probably not not the funnest guy that I turned out to be, but like that's just life. And like I, I'm pretty happy at the moment with how it fell out. Good. Yeah. I, I, I remember um uh, thinking about like the little version of me. I, I had my whole life planned out really? at age like um 16. I thought I knew how my life was going to go and I was going to be 100% right and I was 100% mm. wrong. <laughs> and what did you think of that you're going to become? Um, I thought I was going to be a graphic designer. So it's not too far Um, at uh, Pentagram. And for some reason, I was going to own a Prius and I was going to live in New York. But like, you don't need cars in New York. Yeah. So like, I don't know why that was my plan. But it's good. But why a Prius? I mean... I don't know at the time i like liked priuses i don't know why <laughs> great branding from the US. <laughs> but um yeah it was kind of funny sometimes uh you look back on like your kid dreams like some sometimes kid dreams are like uh i want to be a superhero and you're like well there's no way i would have yeah. done that but sometimes you look back on kid dreams and you're like oh, i don't know if she'd be upset with me but i'm pretty happy now so she has to deal with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, also looking at it, uh, like my dream was to have a lot of people and like that we kind of play around with whatever. And like, that's what we try to kind of create with our company Yeah, uh, is because we, we have 25 people and we're like throwing parties, we're traveling kind of together and stuff like that. So it's not a normal company when everybody's like all, yeah. all across the world. We're flexible, but we're also a team that kind of throws all of the crazy ideas we have together that we have to survive and get back to work after. So it's also, uh, I, I, on that front, I think uh, like little me would be proud. Yeah. To, I think that, I think you were telling me about uh, the team building trip that yeah. you went on. I think that that's even more than, um, I don't know. I feel like that, that means more than like playing video games with your friends. In yeah. House. <laughs> like in right now I'm not playing video games at all. Like, yeah. I was maybe trying even to escape the real world as a kid. Like you learn a lot from video games, but right now I'm just enjoying life. And I like we bought Sony Five, and then it's like staying in the office. Nobody's playing it. Yeah, everybody's like more interested in talking to each other, like doing something in person because 
with all of the time that I spent in front of the TV, I don't want to go ahead, sit, sit home back and like just kind of start playing. Yeah. I mean, sit in front of the TV even more yeah. in the video game. So I'm like kind of fully away from that world at the moment. You, uh, you seem to me like you're, you're a guy that's like, I don't need distractions that aren't helpful to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how my life is at the moment i don't have social media so like yeah. i don't respond to messages pretty yeah. pretty fast that people hate me for that also <laughs> so i'm just trying to have as little distractions as i can like i don't know like the thing is happening like in london i mean the queen has died yeah and everybody in the office is talking about it i'm like what what just happened <laughs> and like and I, we admire you how do you not know the whole internet is buzzing about that I'm like, yeah. i don't read news i don't know yeah you guys gotta tell me yeah that's you guys, why i have that's, you guys around yeah. <laughs> just tell me because all of those like pretty important things are probably yeah. gonna come to you like from somebody in the area so why should i I mean, spend yeah. the time because I cannot change anything there. Yeah. Like I'm just trying to be focused on the things that I can change. That's it. Was um was that something that you had to learn? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, you just have to tell to yourself. I mean, specifically with t when TikTok came out, it was like, oh, a pretty fun way to go ahead and spend my free time, doing yeah. a lot of fun stuff. And then you realize three hours later, you're still like a pretty fun way to go ahead and figure <laughs> out stuff. Yeah. So you just have to learn, okay, I cannot have this on my phone. Like it's not going to take 15 minutes. Yeah. I better delete it and it's going to be much better for me because after two or three days of learning it, you become a little bit depressed yeah uh, and you don't start calling your friends just because that's what i like about having zero distractions is when you're bored you're gonna call somebody and hang out with somebody you're not gonna be okay let me do something on my phone yeah i feel like um uh it's different now with all of these apps on your phone than it was when you were like hanging out with your friends and like talking over like the, yeah. the intercom in the video yeah, game because <laughs> that was also like one of the best things about playing video games because we basically, okay, it was like we had only one group chat. That was the only thing we cared about. Yeah. We had Skype. Everybody was actually talking when they were playing the games. Yeah. So, and when we go out, we talk about everything that happened. So we were basically together 24 seven. So yeah. like, that's one of the best things that happened there versus right now, maybe kids create group chats where they just send the random messages or whatever, send random videos from Instagram. Yeah. And then you get the same connection like you had previously, like at, at the younger age, I guess. Yeah. How do, you, how do you think your life has changed since you're like, I don't need Instagram. I don't need all of this stuff. I can do you fine. You enjoy things a lot more. <laughs> like sometimes I regret it uh, in terms of like, for example, we were at a team, of, a team building event. And when you don't have Instagram or any other social media, you don't have any reasons to go ahead and take pictures of mm. anything because you're just enjoying the time and you're talking to people. And then I get back and I want to post things for my company because we spent a lot of money for a team building event and I want to post it on like, yeah. the, like for branding and stuff. And I realized I was in the moment. So I didn't, I have five images and most of them are like us being drunk or doing stuff like that, which is not <laughs> safe for work. So like on that front, like Instagram is good that you can maybe have a, like your whole life kind of put out for uh, kind of even for anybody to look at, but even for you to take to take a look back. Yeah. But it's also fun that people cannot judge me because nobody can act, actually knows. I can sit with somebody; nobody's gonna know that I have an agency that do those things yeah. because nobody can check me up on on the background. So they're gonna have the feeling of like me talking to you, and like they're not gonna have a different story when they go ahead and check out my Instagram after that. Yeah. It, um. Does that does that happen with you sometimes, where people treat you differently? uh sometimes i mean like because i was on some podcasts or whatever like people treat me more nicely i'm like i'm just a guy why yeah. do you treat so nice <laughs> nice of me like i like the video has a lot of views but it doesn't have yeah it doesn't have to be like that uh but previously they were like an okay they see me on like that's why i turned off instagram because if you travel a lot or whatever people see your instagram and then start talking about you behind your back and stuff like that so really it's, it's not <laughs> it's not a fun thing to have so it's better to be private and then you're gonna be even more proud of things you do and you're gonna be more thoughtful of who you hang out with and actually understand that you have just a few friends that you don't have a million of friends in the end and it's much better to focus on those few friendships instead of thinking that with social media right now, most of people think they have 500 friends and that's yeah. not actually the case. I don't know if you ever had a, a time period where, um, I don't know, or at least I've had it too, where I'm like, I'm kind of bored or like I have this event that I might want to do. And then you start thinking like, who am I going to invite <laughs> that is near me? <laughs> yeah. Like I have, I have like so many friends, like good friends that are uh far away um and they are my real friends but i i think i was i was like maybe i'm gonna do something for my birthday who is near me <laughs> and then i really started thinking like wow i should like have more like 
in the flesh yeah. conversations with people and then like uh, hang out with my my in-person friends more <laughs> yeah that's true that's true i mean a good thing is like we, we have the company so like whenever yeah. i want to throw something like there's 50 people like if it's plus one so like you can throw a party whenever you want to uh but yeah i mean sometimes like when you want to travel like i travel up with my girlfriend or whatever like i like traveling with somebody because it's so fun yeah uh like you cannot do that i mean i can travel for work whenever i want to i'm gonna have somebody there like you travel here mm -hmm. but it's also a completely different experience when you want to just travel for a heck of it with somebody and you realize that you don't have a lot of people to go with in the yeah end. what what did you learn about um friendship as you kind of like gone through this uh maybe that i over committed to many people like that i was telling everybody what i was doing and like not everybody means good to you like in yeah because i was like kind of really motivated i want to help you i want to help you i want to help you i want to do you want to work at our agency come like we're gonna teach you we're gonna do everything we're gonna spend the time to do it and then you realize that some people are like kind of he's showing off he's like that's uh. not really what he wants to do he wants to do something different or whatever so I just kind of learn learn to be a lot more private about the things that I'm going to be doing. Yeah. And then with time, it also changes your mindsets to actually understand what are the things you actually like and not, like, not to buy things because maybe subconsciously you're thinking that somebody else is going to see it or, or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it was really hard also. Like there was a hard period of my life when you actually realize, okay, I thought I have like 50, 60, 100 high school friends. And then you realize, okay, are they really good for me? They just go out and drink and I, yeah. I enjoy something differently. And even though they might be one of the, they might want something good for me, like it's not really good if they ask me to drink six times a week. Oh my God. <laughs> because some people still live like, like life like that because yeah. most of my friends are at college and mm -hmm. what you do at college at the moment, you're, you're just drinking. So it's yeah. also like some, some friends I had to distance from because I didn't like hanging out with them. And some, some of them I like hanging out, but just their lifestyle at the moment is like, they're drinking six times a week. And if I tell, if I sit with them and tell them about my business or about my trips, they're going to be, well, come drink with us. We're going to go, you're, you're so boring. You're just talking about like business or traveling or like doing this and this versus yeah. they're like kind of just getting wasted every other day, really? <laughs> enjoying life, I guess. But that, at least that's what they're thinking of. Yeah. I don't think that's really enjoyment for me at the moment. Did you ever feel out of place? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times. Because, I mean, we're from, like, Serbia, like, not, like, in U.S., like, it's pretty public right now. I'm going to say how much I make. I'm going to say I'm <laughs> successful. I'm going to do this, this. Yeah. And everybody's going to be, okay, go, go, go. I'm going to be even better. Yeah. Versus, versus here, because I don't think that there is, a, like, there is there are, like, more and more and more successful people. But it, it takes a little bit of time for the society to change and to actually accept when somebody is successful. Because previously, uh, many people who were successful, maybe they were for wrong reasons. So like people are always judging them. Like it takes time for people to get adjusted and say mm -hmm. he made a, like a great business or whatever. He's great. And like <laughs> not actually talking some different <laughs> shady stuff behind, <laughs> behind his back. Yeah. That, I don't know. I, th I think that's one thing that, um, I think takes a lot of maturity to understand because there's the, the people that are there for you when you are going through a rough time and those are friends. But it's also the people that when you do succeed, they don't uh, they're not jealous of you. Or yeah. they, uh, some people, I think that if they think uh, um, you attain something, they think that there's less for them. Yeah. But I feel like there's a level of maturity that you need to understand, like, hey, more for them yeah. does not mean less for me. <laughs> the world is big and that's what I'm trying always. Like whoever I talk to, like I'm trying to give them tips or whatever. Like one of my friends is an architect, for example, and I'm giving him tips on what to do like in his career. Yeah. What, like should, should he find first a job before opening a company, then working somewhere for two or three years to get experience and whatever. And like, for example, for him, he's really grateful on that front. He's not like, yeah. why are you talking this to me? He's like, and I want to talk to you even more so I can really? like fast track my career. And like, that I don't have to do all of these things. Yeah. Did, um, I don't know. I, I can't, I can imagine that that can be really rough um, where you are so emotionally connected to a friend and then you realize, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going yeah. to be. And this isn't what I thought was the relationship was like. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard. I mean, like, because like with time people grow apart, like if somebody's growing more in one way and somebody more, grows more on the other way, like I'm really grateful for all the friendships that I have. But, but I mean, like, if if it doesn't boost your life, like, long term, why should you continue hanging out? Yeah. And, like, I, I, many people maybe never realize that. And they're, like, into that single loophole, into, like, <laughs> kind of constantly hanging out with the same people. Yeah. And, like, not growing kind of personally and then having more problems where they have kids or whatever. 
So I'm grateful that that happened because I understand me first, like a lot more. I had time with myself. Yeah. And then you can master yourself and then you can kind of be great for everybody else, which is what most people don't do in the end, I guess. Yeah. Do you, I can imagine. Do you ever think about like what your life would have been if you just like stayed in that track or like tr lived the same lifestyle yeah. as your old friends? <laughs> Probably. I, I don't know. Like right now, I think I would jump off a building or something like that. <laughs> But you never know. I mean, yeah, like your mindset changes. So like if yeah. I maybe did not steer away and then just kind of learned a lot more, maybe you would just have been thinking of that. This is great. And then sometimes maybe like I'm not really jealous of that, but sometimes like kind of, okay, they're maybe ha like not really happy, but they're like less nervous, less whatever mm. than I am because they're just gonna going on with their date and they are not thinking five years in advance like I am with everything I do in my life. <laughs> so it's also like, from 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 a single point is also maybe they're they're like just chill like that's that's yeah. it i guess um uh that would make sense though like uh one of my favorite quotes is uh hard things are hard to get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the like uh, um things that you want are usually hard to get and so um i i guess uh having a great team is a thing that you want but managing and and uh keeping everybody happy and keeping projects coming through to keep that team must be a huge stress yeah it is and like specifically like that's what we're thinking at the moment because like with webflow growing really crazy like we can grow our team like with time to 50 100 people but you're like do you want that much stress stress into your life because like you cannot go ahead to a vacation and like be pretty chilled mm -hmm. i mean like the, the great thing we like i pretty i mean early on i created a really good structure that basically the business runs without me but I still have I mean, that <laughs> feeling that I have to do something that I have to contribute, that you always have to improve, that you always have to be the better, bigger, whatever, to, to keep up with all of the other companies. Mm -hmm. So it's always a stress, like, on how, like, because I always think specifically because I know people in person, like, I feel like if you hire a freelancer, you're like, okay, they are going to find another job mm -hmm. versus when you kind of help people in a small environment, like here, you, you kind of feel like you need to be there with them, you, for them, like even personally, if they have some problems in the company if they have some problems and that you have to guarantee for their families and stuff like that. Like the like one of the really fun things that is happening at the moment, I mean, people are getting married across the organization. I mean, oh, really? I mean, they're getting kids and they're like, kinda, okay, we should maybe give bonuses to people because they're getting, getting kids, like yeah. uh, getting some uh, extra time off when they get a kid, like uh, getting a bonus when they kind of propose their girlfriend or whatever. Aww. So it's really a fun side of business that you see when you actually have people in person that I feel like when you have a freelance business, like you don't actually notice like all of the big milestones that people are having. And how much, like, maybe the salary that you're giving them or whatever is impacting their life and, like, kind of how much they're changing. Maybe traveling for the first time somewhere abroad or whatever, and they ask you for tips how to do it or how to <laughs> save more money or what to do with the money, like, when they have enough and stuff like that. So it's also a really fun part of the process. I can only imagine what it's like to, like, really have one of those relationships with people over time and uh, knowing that, the thing that you started is really helping their life and uh, you can see them grow. You, I mean, it's been three years, but that's enough time to see somebody grow yeah. over time and, and have a more, I don't know, stable, happier life, learning new skills. Yeah. So I mean, like uh, <laughs> we were joking around that we should create a page of all of the things that people were doing before they joined their agency. <laughs> really? We have mechanics, we have doctors, <laughs> we have... Uh, <laughs> uh i don't know like cooks uh, like uh, working in the kitchen or whatever and, like all of them were working on the side like full-time that and then plus learning web flow web design wow. or whatever and then there was a shift and like also a huge commitment from their side that they believed in me they're like okay i'm gonna quit like one of the our lead developers is like was working in norway at volkswagen like as a mechanic like making great salary wow so he quit and came back here and like got a job like at our place wow so it's also a pretty fun thing to see and like right now he like he has a much like easier life i would say than there like he can be with his family uh he's creating his family on his own like he doesn't have any stresses like he would have like like creating a family over there yeah. like abroad what was that conversation like, like mm -hmm. getting him to trust you and coming over here? What was, was it kind of like a give and take? I, I feel like everybody thought that I was, I was crazy because really? like, <laughs> I created that much because like, let's say that was maybe starting to happen when we have five people at the agency. Okay. And then everybody saw like a kid. I was, tw I mean, I'm 23 at the moment. I was 20, like three years ago. Yeah. Like everybody seeing me, what I created, like at that young age, they're like, uh, this can only get better after this. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard that uh, that it, it gets worse after like the somebody creating that that amount of success here at the beginning. So let's let's kind of start talking about like how Flow Ninja started and and how you started really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah of course. So I mean, I I started working pretty young. I would say so. At 15, like I, I remember Webflow was created in 2016, like January 2016. I was looking at the timestamp or something like that. <laughs> so it was a while ago. So like, let's say 2015, I started to work. So like first I had an, like I was working uh, like an influence or whatever. I created an Instagram account. Okay. I had around 200,000 followers or something like that. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. wait, wait, wait. You, have to, you have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, there were a lot of because Instagram was pretty young. There were yeah. a lot of groups that you could actually, I mean, hack growing Instagram pretty easily. Like, like I don't know, two hundred accounts liking your post and yeah. you like theirs, and then you exchanging kind of the boosts, and then you can grow your Instagram. Wow. Few of my friends went a few million there. So like on my side, it was <laughs> enter entrepreneurship uh, yeah. quotes and stuff like yeah. that. So it was called become entrepreneur. So basically, like, wow. even if I was not an entrepreneur, I, I created a, uh, I mean, a, an Instagram page that was, I mean, giving motivational posts and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's where I started to learn web design. I mean, not web design, but design as a, as a whole. Like, yeah. I saw all of the other uh, Instagram, I mean, uh, accounts. They were really badly designed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, which image I'm going to put in the background? Which font I'm <laughs> going to put in the quote? How I'm going to put it? How big is it going to be? Should I put a drop shadow? Creating 50 <laughs> of them and seeing how they go. Like, which quotes? I was really, I mean, really uh, um, getting into the details of how the Instagram post is going to be looking like. Yeah. So I guess that led to a huge growth. So I was selling, I mean, ads there. I was selling um, a lot of different um, ads. Uh, I was selling even my own ebooks. Because you can buy private mm -hmm. label rights for a book and then sell it as your own. Yeah. So basically, I I started a first e-commerce store like on WordPress and then was starting <laughs> to sell all of those books to my audience and was earning pretty well. Like I was, I I could not complain at fifteen. Yeah. No, was, I uh, mean, yeah. <laughs> like I could go out, I could do whatever I want to. Like 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 at, that was first grade of high school, mm -hmm. uh, like at the medical high school. Like because yeah. in Serbia, that's how you go. Uh, so like everybody's like learning and I was also a great student like because I always found fi found hacks on how to hack the system to be a great student so I was always like an A plus student or whatever like nobody notices anything so that I can continue working uh, kind of on my things so yeah I mean that was the first business that grew and then there were a lot of offers to buy my store and like for wow. at that time that was a pretty good deal for me so I decided Okay. And I was also scared because Instagram changed the algorithm at that point to be not not chrono chronological. Oh, because okay. previously, when you post, like everything was chrono chronological, mm -hmm. and then like I was, I was scared that my Instagram is gonna go to oh. <laughs> whatever that the Instagram is gonna go down or whatever. So I decided to sell my store, and wow. that's where I kind of got like a good pile of money. And I was like, okay, this is gonna run for a year or two, and like after that, I cannot live <laughs> off of this because it was not a lot. Okay. And that's when I started to kind of learn design and stuff like that even more and more and more and more. So you were just living a, like a double life. There was yeah. the, the medical school, medical high school, yeah. and then this on the side. Yeah. So basically even there, like I was, I didn't know how I would want to have that amount of motivation like I had at that point because I was waking up at 7 a.m., for example, working until 12 then catching a bus to go to school like yeah. from one whatever then bringing my laptop and then also working in school or just kind of giving to my friends because <laughs> i had to follow and i follow people on instagram at that point oh really so i give that to some of my girlfriends kind of in high school okay <laughs> can you do this for a little bit and they're like another you know, following and following or whatever and then kind of going back and forth so it was also fun they were like kind of he's crazy or whatever but they were kind of into it and then just kind of helping me out with all of the things that are that are happening there so yeah that was that was pretty fun and yeah, that's where I started. I think it was on Fiverr first that I started to create some logos, started to get creating websites for a hundred bucks. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> go start somewhere. Yeah, go start yeah. somewhere. Yeah. That, that, like actually one of my friends uh, purchased uh, a logo for me, like to give me a review or whatever, because I didn't have like all the money I was making was on Pioneer. Uh, I didn't have a way to pay on uh, Fiverr at that point, so he kind of borrowed me money to go ahead and <laughs> kind of start up that part of the business. Aww. So basically he bought that, I had a good review, and then I started to create five bucks logos and a hundred bucks websites, kind of asked my business, and that was also like kind of working eight hours a day for the full month for a hundred bucks was probably not the greatest point of my life, but <laughs> it was something. <laughs> I mean, how did you manage 
school and that and i assume you slept at some <laughs> yeah some i mean when you're younger maybe you don't need a lot of sleep and yeah. i was also sleeping in school like <laughs> i was having friends helping me in school where i was cheating a lot honestly like on tests <laughs> and stuff like that we created a lot of fun ways to to cheat yeah, yeah. i was also sometimes paying friends to help me out <laughs> in school <laughs> So I had to automate some of the some of that, and the yeah. professors were hating me because. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How um, would your uh, your professors have described you? Uh, like I'm gonna be the greatest failure in life ever. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh, that didn't pan out how they yeah. thought. It yeah, it didn't pan out. <laughs> Next year is gonna be the high school reunion, so that's gonna be fun. Oh really? Yeah. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not for my friends, more more for the professors to really? just sit down with them. Oh, what you're doing in your life? <laughs> Same thing five years ago. Oh, great. <laughs> um, I I, uh, I saw something online that were kind of reminded me of that. Um, uh, <laughs> it was this this uh, doctor who's doing like a little TikTok thing, and he was like, um, uh, this the salary and uh, talking to people isn't enough. Like, I need to go and find my math teacher from fifth grade and let her know I'm a doctor yeah. now. <laughs> That's gonna be the, uh, that, that that's probably the, the greatest feeling uh, for your kid. I mean, to to kind of maybe feed your inner self, like the yeah. little you, like and just gonna go ahead. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, I succeeded because, I mean, that maybe caused like not really depression, but a lot of pressure on me also at that mm -hmm. point because everybody's telling you you're not gonna be successful. My parents were like, "What are you doing? Why are you not finishing your high school? Like, really? Yeah, get that on the side, please. Don't do that or whatever." So like it was basically just me in my head knowing okay I directly like I feel like from the first grade of uh, high school I know okay I'm gonna be successful and I had my vision and everybody yeah. around me was that's gonna be failing and like that maybe fed up my uh, ego or whatever just to prove everybody wrong okay this is this is gonna work in the end. Who says to like a 15 year old kid that like you're not gonna be anything? Who says that Welcome to a kid? To Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> Here, <laughs> here, people are harsh. Nobody's like an around the bush. Oh, son, it's gonna be better next yeah. time. He's like, what? What the hell are you doing? Really? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I in the U.S., like you only really say that to somebody if they're like having severe, like, I don't know, they're not showing up to school, they're on drugs. Like, yeah. that's the only thing that. <laughs> but I, even like if somebody wanted to go do something that um i don't know maybe isn't traditionally super successful people be like well i guess you'll find a way to do it i don't know <laughs> no here it's like uh i have like for example b minus or something and yeah. i'm like why why <laughs> what are you doing with your life you have only to finish the school and you're not doing anything else yeah yeah <laughs> you're just sitting uh, sitting on your computer for the whole day or whatever really well, that's what that's what people do now. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty well right now. I guess so. Uh, it's it, it panned out nicely. So I mean, yeah, I mean, like I started on on Fiverr, and I was also like everything I've done in life, I wanted to over optimize it. So I read all, every single blog on how can you optimize your Fiverr account. Yeah. How can you get more exposure on like, everything like that? What are the best niches to be on Fiverr and stuff stuff like that? So like 16 year old me doing <laughs> market research on best way to present your logos and stuff like that. So yeah, it was fun. Uh, and then I decided, okay, I need to earn. I realized, okay, what's my dad's salary? Okay, this is nowhere clear, close to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm busting my ass for the whole day. So I'm uh, like, it, it needs to be a little bit better. Yeah. So that's where I discovered Upwork and they're actually one of our clients. So that's also pretty fun right now. <laughs> uh, and that's where I started to kind of I'll work on Upwork and then create a whole different strategy for Upwork than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I really spent time on copywriting and actually, okay, if I was a client and if I read my copy, how am I going to feel? Because most people are, I do HTML, CSS or whatever, and they just have a long list. Mm -hmm. I was creating, I mean, funny copy or whatever, just kind of totally non-technical, like yeah. kinda about myself, about kind of <laughs> like, uh, you're, you're probably reading a, a, a 50s uh, portfolio right now. So I know you're bored, so I'm going to be keeping <laughs> it short or something like that. So I was always trying to have that fun. What's my photo going to look like? How am, am I going to optimize my title to be as short as possible and to be as direct as possible? Yeah. And then I started to apply for jobs. And also, I mean, I have that on YouTube at the moment. Uh, you you know Loom at the moment, uh, and you use Luma a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at that time, there was no Loom, <laughs> so I was basically recording myself. I didn't have a webcam, so I was recording myself with a video camera, really uploading that to YouTube as a private video. 
And then for every single job I was applying, I would put a link to the private YouTube video, just saying, hey, John, I saw you p published um, a project for web design, uh, kind of for, for designing your website, whatever. I can do this, this, this. I know this, this. Yeah. I created my own portfolio. I think that at that moment, it was also in Webflow. That was all around 2016. Created my portfolio in Webflow with five fake websites. Yeah. So like for, uh, I did a website for a fitness trainer, bought a domain <laughs> for that. For, yeah. uh, it was, it was called, uh, breeding for dogs or whatever. Breed, oh, breeding for dogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. One of my friends, I had a, like, how do you call that? Dog breeder? Dog breeder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a dog breeder. Yeah. So I created a website for him just so I can have at least five, uh, websites on the portfolio. Yeah. Did a professional photo shoot or whatever created my portfolio and then every every time like I applied for a job I was sending a full video like introducing myself specifically for that person yeah. I was finding their name in the bio like because <laughs> in the reviews on Upwork you can find their name because it's not public yeah. where they're from like oh hey Alex it's really good to see that today's weather in London it's not rainy I know how painful that can be <laughs> here's a video that I recorded for you and Aww. then like it has a hundred percent open rate wow because I mean specifically in Upwork a lot of people are just kind of saying the same, sending the same thing. Yeah. And I know with somebody who is hiring at the moment, like you just see like, okay, you did not spend five minutes to apply for this job. Like you cannot do it this way. Like, and yeah. then you see that one specific person, it's maybe not even due to the quality of work they're doing. It's like, okay, he's not going to scam me for sure. He's going to try his best to do what he's, his best from his side. Yeah. And that's where I started to get some clients. I mean, everything started rolling, like everything was going pretty well. And I think at that point I got banned from Upwork because I had two accounts. I created one when I, the moment when I created a Fiverr account, I created an Upwork account okay. and then I was working on Fiverr. And then when I wanted to go back to Upwork, I forgot that I created one account before that. So I created a new one and it's like against their terms of service to have two accounts for the yeah. same person, which is totally fine. I mean, like that's yeah. just terms of service. Uh, and my account got banned. So like I had, okay, so I have zero clients right now. So like, what, what do I do now? So that was a scary moment for, for like a, a young person to, to notice at a pretty young age. Oh my God. How did you react? What was, were you I was, okay? I was crying a lot. I <laughs> Uh, but it's also pretty good because I was really focused on just Upwork and I didn't actually, didn't learn actual marketing, didn't, mm -hmm. didn't learn SEO, didn't learn anything about my brand Yeah. because I was focused. Okay. I found a cheat sheet on how to get clients on Upwork. This is going to run me for the rest of my life. And that's it. <laughs> and it was good. I mean, knock on wood. Okay. You cannot do that. Like you need like a real brand. You need people coming to you for you and not for like being somebody that is like having a tactic on Upwork or whatever. So that's where I opened up, um, First, WorshMickey.com, like that was my first website. And huh. I think it, the company was called Mick Media. Mick Media? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Because my name is Mikic and like, yeah. like all, all Serbian people always name their company after their last names. Huh. So I was also going on that front. Okay, Mick Media. <laughs> There's Vayner Media and yeah. then Mick Media. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> uh, and we actually changed the name because I wanted to have a real brand. And when you type in Mick Media, you have a hundred Mick Medias acro across the world. So like, oh. you never know. Yeah. Who's the real one? Yeah. Yeah. Do you look back on the Upwork account being taken from you as like a really painful lesson? Yeah. yeah. Right now we're doing a lot of different marketing. I mean, like we're doing podcasts like we're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I'm not having my own YouTube channel. We're doing SEO. We're uh, sponsoring conferences. I mean, we're sponsoring a conference in Amsterdam. We're sponsoring a conference in Serbia after that. So we're trying that. Uh, I mean, we're doing a lot of kind of maybe networking events where I meet a lot of different agency owners. So they kind of bring me clients. So we try to have at least 10 different channels of marketing so mm -hmm. that we don't end up in the same situation. If our SEO strategy breaks that we're out of like any work or whatever. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, so you go from Upwork, um, you, you have the really bad, I, I'd be pretty upset about that yeah. for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, uh, pick yourself back up and then keep going? Yeah. So, I guess like you have to be, uh, I mean, pretty consistent and you also have to have a lot of luck, I guess. Yeah. One of the clients that, that we, I was working with, like it was a crypto startup, uh, I mean, a blockchain startup at the time. 
uh, like even before all the crypto things happen at the moment, I would be a gazillionaire. I think if I kept all of the money at that point, but I was selling it for my salary. Uh -huh. um, they offered me a full-time position, like I think two or three months ago after that. So I started to build my own brand, to slowly work on that, but like you cannot build a brand in two or three months. Mm. And at that point I got an offer for a full-time position uh, as a designer and a web developer actually Okay. Uh, to, to, to work for them. Like basically I was designing the whole platform uh, on Webflow, I mean, uh, as a prototype type mm. because most of their front-end developers that's not possible that's not possible that's not possible <laughs> so their ceo is like an okay we're made it in webflow this is html and css you're not gonna develop it like on your own like <laughs> we have a fully working prototype we're gonna have uh yeah. everything working and like because it was a crypto casino yeah. it was a lot of html games that i was playing around with webflow and that's how i basically learned every single part of webflow wow. because i had to create a game for example for blackjack like you create the blackjack table, you create blackjack, t uh, I mean, chips, you create all of the buttons, you have cards. So then you first deal <laughs> cards, rotate them with Z, Z index, like, like this, deal yeah. the different cards with Z index. Some of them are the down, uh, like on down. You click once to bet, chips move to a different place. And like basically the whole blackjack game created yeah. in Buffalo with interactions. And you were 17? Something like that <laughs> at that point, yeah. <laughs> And so how do you get to the point where you're you're so advanced that you can start making games? Like I've known, I've seen um, Timothy Rex do things like that and uh, other people. And I just always look at it. Like I, I watch their videos, but it still seems like so um, not unattainable, but like impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of free time. And I would say also <laughs> the thing that I was having a full-time job actually yeah. helped me do it. Because if I did not have a full-time job, if I was juggling a lot with a lot of different clients. Yeah. It would be pretty hard. Like yeah. even right now, some like when I help somebody at the agency, even I'm the CEO right now, I don't develop. Yeah. But if somebody's having a problem, I, I fix it in two minutes. They're like, who knows how many hours or was sitting in front of his computer before he figured that one out. Yeah. Because there's a lot of strange bugs. It was basically, I mean, the company had to afford me playing uh, one month in Webflow, just sitting yeah. 10 hours a day just to identify how to move the card from here to here and to rotate it and to research on forums and stuff like that. And like even the forums were not so popular at the moment. So like mm. it was a lot of manual work, like a lot of things you can fix right now in two minutes. Like you had to spend a lot of time to understand that uh, at that point. And I don't know, did that, was that ever tough or scary? Like, okay, well, I have this project. Am I even going to be able to do it? Yeah, because I, I, I was really anxious because for example, we're creating a game. And then I look back and for a week, I have to present something on the sprint meeting on Monday to my team. Oh, wow. And I was just kind of playing around with Webflow and I did not manage to create something like that or to fix a single bug because in a game, like on a website, like fixing a bug, it might, might be a little bit easier. But on a game, like you're like, for example, like on iPhones, we have problems with, we wanted to have the games being full screen. And like, you cannot do that because of the bar on the bottom, because it needs to work on Android and mobile. Mm -hmm. And I remember fixing that for two weeks and having zero progress. And I'm like, I'm on checking meetings. Well, I'm still fixing this. Like, <laughs> do you have any progress? Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to have it. <laughs> no worries. Tomorrow it's going to be there. And then tomorrow comes? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, with time, I managed to fix that. But it's yeah. also, I'm really blessed that I was at that position that they had a pretty good budget. And it was also a lot cheaper for them for me to go ahead and play around instead of developers, like actually doing mm -hmm. front-end work and like on their side, it would take, I, I think five or six times more. Wow, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so I mean, it's not more of even a budget, but because it was a pretty, like that's where ICOs started out. Like it was one of the first ICOs ever. It was just time. Like they didn't care even like about the money. Like they could pay me a good salary, but they needed something to be tested out and to be presented to the marketing team to see how it's gonna work. Like we created, I mean, those bonus pop-ups, we created the uh, uh, slot machine games because wow. you basically have to figure out, I mean, that's where I learned, okay, I have a slot machine that has 24, I learned the math for the slot machine and then how the interactions are gonna be pushing mm -hmm. those 24 things and when they're gonna stop and how they're gonna be playing around. And then the animations when it kind of locks in and stuff like that, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> do, you, do you look back on it fondly? Like yeah. positively? Yeah, because that's basically sometimes I'm, because I still, uh, I'm, I love design because I was also a designer there because all of the things I developed, I first designed in Figma. When we get verification, Figma I was developing because I was a unicorn. At the moment we have <laughs> design, web designers and Webflow developers because even with enterprise projects, you have to do a lot of JS work. Mm. 
uh but at that point like it was my my zen time like i can get lost in the work like yeah. you don't have meetings you don't have emails you don't have anything yeah you just get to work and for eight hours you just work yeah like, and sometimes i feel jealous of my people of my team. <laughs> like if they have a pretty big project and i see that for like a week they were just working on something like that i wish i could do that <laughs> at the moment i i get around four hours of day work Per day yeah. and after that like it's meeting yeah uh, meetings and stuff like that and sometimes i'm like i wish i could work on this idea for five days straight <laughs> without anybody interrupting uh, interrupting me and that's yeah that would be the best but just, i guess that's life <laughs> put yourself in a little vacuum yeah like just uh white walls and one computer <laughs> yeah because at the moment i'm thinking like that for business ideas but you can imagine being in that vacuum and then thinking about that single card and the webflow interaction for five days yeah you can get the realization much faster than you could <laughs> like with anything else yeah i i remember um i remember something i was working on and uh i figured out how to fix it while i was in the shower like i was like oh I, why didn't i think of that like i should have done that yeah <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I look back and regret is getting more sleep and getting more time off from computer because oh. at the moment, specifically in business, like most of the ideas I get, I get when I'm away from my laptop and actually thinking about it. Yeah. But there I was like, I cannot stay. And I need to sit here <laughs> for 14 hours until I fix it and yeah. something magic is going to happen. But it usually doesn't. And then you go to the next day and to the next day and you're tired and stuff like that. But yeah, you just live and learn. Yeah, you, you learn how to avoid being burnt out yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when you think, go back and, and uh, you were telling me that your parents were like, well, why aren't you finishing um, pharmacy school? Yeah. But was there a point where you made the decision to not graduate or what was that like for you? So, for example, for high school, I graduated and I graduated with A plus whatever, like casual. Yeah, I, I found a way to cheat everything. So like, <laughs> honestly, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm the greatest, like maybe many of the kids that were actually learning, like and my kind of classmates that were actually learning were maybe angry at me because I fa always found a way loophole. To, a loophole to actually go ahead and do it and yeah. like, to, to pass the tests. Yeah. And uh, like, I always wanted to finish that just to go, okay, to prove it. And then when I went to the university, I actually signed up for the first and then the second year of university. Uh, for on the second year, I went for one day and then dropped off after that. Wait, really? Yeah. Was it a real? Was it a horrible day? Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but like when I only when I I mean signed up for university, it was like okay, I have one year right now to prove that I can like make this happen. That yeah. I don't have to finish this university. This the thing that I don't <laughs> like at, uh, doing at all. Yeah. And that's like after a year, like we grew like pretty good, and I was like okay, so like we're growing pretty good, like. I'm uh, like, I'm losing, like when I realize how much money I'm losing because I'm not working because I'm mm. listening to the classes at the university, that's where I, yeah. okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm really grateful I did that because if I did not make the switch in my head, like that soon enough, like I probably wouldn't create anything because there yeah. was no fallback plan. Like mm. when I cut the first year of university, there is nothing like I'm going to get a good job or whatever. It's like, you have to do it or you're yeah. going to leave on the street and that's it. Was that really scary? I loved what I'm doing. So like, yeah. it was scary. I'm not going to say it wasn't, but I somehow always just thought about what's next, what's next, what's next in small steps at a time. I did not yeah. think about the whole picture about only recently I started to think like about a company that's where we started. I mean, the hiring finance managers, customer success managers and stuff like that. Yeah. And I realized, okay, this is for the next 20, 30 years. How can we make this work for the, I mean, for the longest time and like, but before that, and it was also probably why we were so successful is, okay, let's just look at the next two, three months. And that's what everything I had in my head in the next two, three months and like nothing after that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, uh, one step at a time. Yeah. If you look at it too far in the future, you might get a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Or just start getting pretty big ideas and like not actually putting all the small things you need to do in order to get those big ideas. And you just kind of overwhelmed with all of the ideas and don't do anything. Yeah, yeah, but paralysis by yeah. paralysis by analysis. Yeah, something like that, probably, <laughs> and just kind of having a lot of meetings, not actually resulting in anything. Yeah, what um, what was that like talking to your parents, saying like, "Hey, this is what I'm gonna do. I don't want to go to college. Uh, I actually have this other plan that I think is gonna work out. Please yeah. trust me." <laughs> uh, they were like, "Okay, son, we have a house, so you're gonna have somewhere to live. Like, if yeah. you, everything drops out, so." <laughs> but they were not feeling it. Uh, yeah. Like they were yelling a lot about, on me and stuff like that. Really? So, <laughs> just Serbian parents you have to live with it. Like it's normal talking about that here. <laughs> Uh, but they were not, I mean, supportive because like for them specifically, because they were, 
like on like even like when I was also working on Fiverr or whatever, I was helping them because they were selling fruit, uh, like at the shop. Mm -hmm. So I was actually going to work and like for anything I wanted in life, I had to go to the fruit shop, like for work eight hours a day, like over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday yeah. to sell, to buy a shirt or whatever. So I, from the young age, I had to learn, okay, in order to have money, you have to work. Yeah. And they're like, okay, son, you know how hard we have to work in order to just live by, not actually have a great life. Do you actually want to, I mean, end up like we ended up with? Mm. Because, I mean, it they were have like a, a big conspiracy on their side about entrepreneurship because that, that, that was their store. They were having a lot of problems. They had good times, but they also had pretty bad times where they could barely live. Mm -hmm. So, like, for them, it was, okay, go to college. That's just because they were looking at some of their friends that finished college. Okay, they live okay lives. It's not great, but they live okay. Yeah. Why do you want to go ahead and get, get back to what we were doing kind of, um, before or something like that? Mm-hmm. So like they, I, uh, uh, putting, uh, I mean, into their shoes at that, at that time, they had no idea what's internet or what's, what am I doing? Like, so they could not believe me or anything, anything similar. My dad was like, when I started to make some good money, he sit, sat next to me on the chair just to look at what I'm working, that I'm actually working, that I'm not selling drugs online or anything like that. <laughs> he, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> The first big money I made, he was like, okay, go buy me a beer and buy me a chocolate and give it back home. Like that I that I did not give you money for it. Yeah. And I'm going to believe you that you're making money online. Before that, like you're just playing games. On the really? Computer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure like it's um, it's hard to understand something that you haven't used or you, you're not exposed to. Yeah. I mean, they didn't like, in, specifically in Serbia, we had like the war in 99 or whatever, like. They had a lot of different problems to, th to think about. They yeah. could not, I mean, follow up with all of the latest trends in the world and internet. So, like, yeah. for them, it's mostly focused about surviving and kind of maybe going uh, to Greece once a year or whatever and not actually, I mean, kind of living a secure life or, like, you know, just not caring about money or anything similar. What are what are your parents like? Yeah, they're great. I mean, like, I'm, I'm really <laughs> grateful for them, like, probably because they were so tough. Uh, like, for us, it's not like, like, maybe in the U.S. or whatever, somebody may might be uh, mad at their parents that they were so tough mm. but they prepare me for the world that is like at the moment like, there was no fluff like from the young age yeah. like from 12 years old there you're told you son there like this is not a fairy tale you have to work if you want to earn money if you want to live well yeah if you want to do things this costs that much you worked eight hours you bought a shirt is it really worth that you worked eight hours to buy a shirt yeah so you're not gonna buy a pretty expensive shirt and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> when you realize how hard you have to work for it yeah i I've, I've heard a lot here about like um don't let your your eyes be bigger than your stomach yeah like mm -hmm. uh, if you're gonna put something on your plate you better eat it yeah like you're not throwing that out <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like uh yeah. i mean we we had like it's bad luck if you leave something in your plate really you know, when you start eating so like <laughs> We were not used to having a, a bunch of things and having a, like a lot of uh, a, a lot of things on the table or whatever like excess e excess like yeah. it was just enough to get by and like that that that's it and um, also it's pretty fun to live that way because you can appreciate much more things and right now I'm more appreciative in the business for the relationships and for like I mean for meeting you I'm like this is pretty fun like I <laughs> yeah. may, might not be able to meet you if I didn't have a business and like I'm more grateful for that than for the money because. That's why we also have a finance manager only right now after three and a half years because yeah. he needs to take all the all care of all that <laughs> because I don't care about like the profit margin and uh, things like that. I more, more, mostly care about meeting people, helping them and kind of the, the experiences that I'm going to gather from that. Like building a network of yeah. people and, and working together and getting projects done. That's yeah. more what you're focused yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, like, like recently we went down to Belgrade uh, to meet one of the agency owners that is also doing Webflow and like, oh, wow, like I'm the, I went to Dubai, uh, like, it's not an important thing, but I was like, for example, on a yacht with some, a different agency owner, like, wow. he has an agency <laughs> that is really bigger than mine, so yeah. he could afford that, but it's not about affording that, it's more, mostly about the stories that you're going to be able to, I mean, listen, and like, in the end, it's all about the stories, like, even yeah. when people that are really on a high level, like maybe for a day or two when you meet them, they're going to talk business. And after that, they're going to talk about uh, some different stories or whatever happened in their life, how they went to China and what a funny thing happened when well, they, when they were doing business. Yeah. Something funny happened and they're like, kinda, they messed up or whatever and they like kinda <laughs> laugh about it or, yeah. or just listening to those really fun stories uh, about things like that. Uh, if somebody told me um, uh, um, uh, like funny stories are like misery in retrospect like <laughs> when you get lost or something like that you're like oh you remember when we were driving around for like eight hours yeah it wasn't fun in the moment but now it's like so yeah. funny to look back on it <laughs> but i mean with any single point in life i mean 
great moments are gonna be good, but you're mostly like when you sit with friends, you're gonna say, okay, remember the time like for example when you got drunk, so we had to carry you home, and you're gonna be laughing about that for the next yeah. one hour, just kind of adding little stories on top of that. You're never gonna be remember the time when you perfectly went and yeah. skied like the best thing ever. You're gonna <laughs> you remember the time when we were learning you how to ski and you crashed like uh, 50 times in a day, like yeah. we were making fun of you. Like that's what you're gonna remember in the end. That was me at Aqua yeah. Ski the other day. <laughs> I have a huge bruise right here really? from, from aqua ski. It's not huge. It's just uh, I, I think I fell um, a couple times. And then the, the the last time I actually like went one length of the river. And then um, uh, when it came to the turn, I just crashed. Yeah. <laughs> and where did you go? Oh, it was it was aqua ski in um on, in Belgrade. Nice. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been there. I, I didn't know that it exists. It's so cool. There's a um there's a wire. And it pulls you around in a circle. I, I was doing yeah. that in Lithuania and that was the worst experience in my really? life. Really? Because I was doing aqua board, not the skis. Yeah. And then uh, the only experience that I've got is like the string pulls me and then I face palm in the water. The string <laughs> pulls me and I face palm in the water 50 times. And I never yeah. actually went to actually board on the water and like do it. Yeah. So like it, it's not a good memory <laughs> for me. A 15 year old Serbian kid that I just met taught yeah. me how to ski. Yeah. <laughs> He was, uh, um, I don't know, I think he went behind me and he was like, okay, Emily, don't pull. Just let it pull you. Don't pull. And the whole time I was I was skiing, I was like, don't pull, don't pull, don't pull. And then I crashed. But mm -hmm. It was fine. <laughs> but, but yeah, those stories with people are really, I don't know, it's really interesting because, I don't know, especially I grew up so isolated where most people around me um, lived the same lifestyle as me, traveled like the same amount as me, which is not. Um, and, <laughs> and so uh, a lot of people, um, they think that like all of these places in Europe, like like the idea of going to France or the idea of going to all of these other places, they're kind of like like fantasy land. Like the idea that you might go once when you're uh, doing study abroad and then you might go one more time, like maybe when you're retired, but like that's it. And so doing the podcast and like meeting people and like even me physically being here is like so surreal yeah <laughs> it's because like honestly I was I was so upset when I was in college and I couldn't afford to go on study abroad and also it like there were other reasons why I couldn't go um but I was like oh there's my opportunity it's gone I'm never gonna go again yeah. and <laughs> and it I wish I could have told myself how it turned out, but like making friends, um, I have friends in, in Germany and in Serbia and all these different places. And it just makes it all how much you realize um, uh, things are way more normal than you think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. Normal. I remember that when I was going to Lithuania, I was like 16, 17. Like, yeah. I cannot remember the exact age, so I might, I might be butchering that. So sorry for any listeners. <laughs> and like parents go online, Lithuania, Vilnius. Uh, and my dad was researching what's the kill rate there. And like the kill rate is like 1% higher than in Serbia and whatever. <laughs> no, you're going to get killed there. You're never going to come back, whatever. And I'm, like, yeah. I'm going. I don't care about anything. I'm going. And you can imagine like me being below 18 and like traveling alone in Lithuania. And my, my, I mean, my mom and dad the first time heard that there was Lithuania as a country. Oh, and then really? after that, uh, Vilnius, what the heck is that? And you're traveling for yeah. work. Uh, like, so it was not their head. Like, they didn't let me go, but I still went. <laughs> so, but I know the exact same story. Yeah. Like you said, it's normal. Like, yeah, you, you're not gonna get, like, I don't know, yeah. kidnapped when you go to a different place or something like that. It's people yeah. are nicer. Like, there are places, of course, like you do the research, you're not gonna go, like, specifically in London. Yeah. You're not gonna go to places where you don't need to go to. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna carry a fancy watch in London or whatever because yeah. you just know what you need to do. But it's good. Like you're, you're just gonna, you can travel the world. Everybody's kind and like that's to our hearts, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, um, uh, I, I can tell you the, the first time I went to Serbia, I got my, I was like, I don't know, I was so nervous. I was like, I got my nails done. I, I got my hair cut. I wanted to make a good impression on the people I was meeting. Um, I did not need to do that. They, they didn't care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I was I was at the salon and uh, this this woman said, oh, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Serbia. And uh, she's American. And she said, um, oh, OK. And <laughs> I said, all right. And then she said, um, uh, are you going to be comfortable covering your hair while you're there? And I'm like, it took me a second. I was like, oh, she thinks I'm talking about Syria. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, no, that is a different place. <laughs> we have that a lot. And so yeah. like we have either Syria or Siberia. Like yeah. when we, specifically when we call talk to our clients, like sometimes like uh, where are you from? Can I like, is it cold there? Like, um, I, like we're in Balkans. Here, here. <laughs> it's not far from Greece or yeah, Italy. Uh, 
Yeah, but it's also fun to, to kind of maybe specifically in, in a country like ours that is not so popular to actually, I mean, yeah. uh, make people come here and kind of experience the culture and everything because every European uh, country has a pretty rich culture. So it's always yeah. fun to go ahead and research history and everything around that. Yeah, there there was this um YouTuber that uh, does travel videos yeah. in the US and uh, she actually, um she did a video where uh, there was this old brick wall it was like 200 years old and she was so amazed she was like oh my god it's 200 years old and i can touch it and then lazar was sitting next to me and he was just laughing and she's like she thinks that's old yeah come <laughs> come to europe or anywhere else like and i just see figuring out like even in serbia like we have yeah. really really old stuff happening yeah. here so like it's, it's so fun seeing kind of how how rich the culture is and like kind of just that's the thing that I hated that I hate the most at the moment that I did not learn a lot about history when I was oh, younger. Really? Because they did not taught us like they taught us facts and they did not taught us a high picture. And mm -hmm. like that's what I'm slowly learning kind of with time and just kind of like that's one of my hobbies is kind of learning a little bit more about history, even about our country. I'm ashamed that really? I know some history about my country, but we have really rich history and I want to actually go ahead and learn all about our country. Yeah. So that I can kind of when talking to you, I can <laughs> go ahead and say a pretty fun fact. Yeah. Uh, I can do a lot of those, but not enough. Like, like well, that, I would, that I would be happy for. Yeah. So, um, like that's the thing that everybody goes in going to school learn a lot more about history. That's gonna be so <laughs> so much fun when you're older, I guess. Is there is there a piece of history that's like kind of like your favorite to bring up with people who aren't Serbian? Not to put you on the spot. Nah. <laughs> I mean, like, maybe the fun thing looking at it is that the whole Balkan region was basically one single country. Yeah. Uh, so, like, when you look at it that way, like, it's so fun that maybe it was a country as big as maybe US or, like, uh, Russia, whatever. I mean, it yeah. had a really big influence on the world economy. And, like, kinda with wars and stuff like that, the, like, everything got split up. And, like, younger people don't care about it. Everybody's, like... Oh, every, any other country like uh, everybody's really friendly and like everybody wants yeah. to hang out with, with each other but like our, i guess our older <laughs> older <laughs> older siblings made a mess out of it and like and, uh, that actually crashed our country and like we're one of the smallest countries in the world at the moment mm -hmm. versus like how big the empire and everything like that even before that you can go years and years in the history and seeing kind of how big everything was and uh, kind of how large of an impact i guess we had uh, across the world and like how that shifted also how the power across Europe shifted mm. how we had a lot of impact and nothing and then kind of going back and forth so it's always so fun to see um I one of my favorite um uh I I don't know but the, the thing that you bought a souvenir yeah a souvenir, the thing that you buy um uh I bought um the uh Tito's cookbook uh he is it's like the square cookbook yeah. and it's like all of the meals that you can make, like when he would uh, go yachting with Sophia Lauren yeah. and uh, all of these things and all of these dinners. I think he had a dinner with like JFK or something yeah. like that. It was it was wild just to like, they had one page was all of the um, uh, details of what the event was with the photos. And then the other one was the meal that you could make. Um, and they, they talked about all, all of that. And I just thought it was really interesting. Just the, the amount of overlap um throughout history like you don't really think about uh how well all of these um uh world leaders how they interact with each other and stuff like that so sometimes i would i would uh just go through the book i'm like he knew this actress he knew this yeah. president wow this guy's been everywhere yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's so fun i mean like and also seeing like maybe in terms of the history how everybody was really connected to the history and that they had like for example you said maybe yeah. a special dish yeah. from the region that they always wanted to make for somebody that they went a step above and beyond to go ahead and showcase that. Yeah. And right now, maybe with time that it's getting lost more and more and more, like that people are not focused what wine I'm going to be serving you, how I'm mm. going to be accommodating you, what food I'm going to be giving you, that I had all of those traditions that had to be met because somebody's ca coming and that you have to kind of show yourself in the best way possible. Yeah. Hey, I got to say, um, your your hospitality is very nice. Thank you. <laughs> This is probably one of the nicest welcomes that I got visiting a, a friend in another place. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we were raised, I guess. Anybody that comes to me, I'm going to pick them up at the airport, to host yeah. them, and just kind of show them around to show them the, the city in the best way possible. Yeah. Uh, just because that's how I was raised. That's how I, anybody that, that came, like my parents taught me that that's what you do. Like, I yeah. don't have anything in my head telling me not to do it. Like, it's just, <laughs> uh, I'm always uh, amazed that it's not like that in some different countries. It's just, like, just yeah. a normal thing to do here. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think the American equivalent is like somebody comes over to your house and you're like, oh, would you like a glass of water? No. <laughs> that's kind of like what's normal for us. Like, sometimes it's wine, but mostly it's like, oh, it's a glass of water. Let's hang out and talk. How are you doing? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> here, probably like, 
sometimes like you can create a party or just gonna invite somebody to a party <laughs> you're just gonna plan your whole week out if somebody's coming just to make Aww. sure that they're they're good that they're gonna remember the trip and i wanted to come back that's so nice yeah i, I don't know uh different worlds i guess different worlds. <laughs> Yeah, and even like kind of here, like even when you go to a meeting here, maybe like many times when I go from niche to Belgrade to a meeting, yeah. people are like going to be, okay, let's go after the meeting for dinner or whatever, yeah. just because you traveled a lot, you probably don't have what to do like yeah. afterwards. Let's just plan a, a dinner after the meeting just to talk and just kind of like whatever. Yeah. And, and like maybe in the like US, you just business, like kind of do a meeting 30 minutes, like just business, like you go, you do you, you, do yeah. you I, do, I do me and that's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think unless uh unless it's like team building americans yeah. really like team building like the um uh flying everybody in the team out to one place like getting everybody hotels and then uh going out to eat and then everybody goes back to the hotels yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> yeah i mean uh, the fun thing about like let's say our team building like yeah. it was a resort so like everybody like there were like two or three people sleeping together in the same room oh nice so it's also so fun i mean me waking up and like i'm waking up the first and then going and waking up everybody okay <laughs> breakfast is served <laughs> Like you can imagine your CEO waking you up at <laughs> 9 a.m. Like, oh, <laughs> this guy. I want, I want to be mad, but I cannot. <laughs> I can't get upset over yeah. breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we were kind of talking about, um, you were, you left, you decided not to go ahead with, um, a, a college and a major that you weren't interested in, and you were thinking, okay um mom and dad i'm gonna try to do something that you do not understand and you aren't sure if this is gonna work out but somehow i'm gonna go do it anyway um so uh where where was like what was life like after that like you were living at home you were yeah working. i was living with my parents so like maybe the first thing in my in my head was okay i had to buy an apartment so they can see <laughs> <laughs> that uh this is actually tangible like what, I, what yeah. i'm doing like if i like nobody like in my surroundings whatever is ever thinking like they're thinking i'm gonna buy an apartment if it's 40 or whatever yeah okay if, if i buy an apartment they're gonna be oh shit okay he did something for him like yeah. they're gonna start believing me so that was the first thing i did <laughs> like i think i was 20 or something like that 1920 when i bought my first apartment wow so like and i bought it in cash because in serbia like it's much cheaper to buy really? apartment or whatever so I just went there and like, okay, here's an apartment now. I have an apartment. I started to live on my own. And they're like, kind of, whoa, 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 okay, what the hell happened here? <laughs> so from there, I guess they started to believe me a lot more. Yeah. And then, I mean, in terms of the offices, investments, they were like, when they realized that I'm making good money, they're like, okay, go ahead and save it. Yeah. But I was the crazy person who went ahead and invested everything back into the business. Mm. Like you can see the office and everything like that. We <laughs> didn't have to, we, we could have been remote or whatever, but mm. I always wanted to make that experience for the people here yeah. actually pretty unique. So like the next thing they didn't support me, I guess, was like me blowing all of the money in buying every single laptop, the latest uh, that I yeah. could, uh, investing into kind of the equipment, spending all of the money for the events that we hosted and stuff like that, that uh, they were like, okay, you can do many more things with that. But I did not care, honestly, <laughs> like it was uh, mostly fun coupons. Okay, <laughs> like you can do this, you can do this better, you can do this better. Yeah. And it was mostly on how can we improve the business instead of kind of how can I spend the money because... Like, I did not care much about that. Yeah. You're like, I have a place to live. Yeah. I can afford my groceries. I'm and good. It's a, it, <laughs> and it's a, a, a real, like, specifically, like, when you're when maybe from a poor country, it's a, it's a real, like, maybe a real, reality check. Because many times people, until they're 40, they're like, I don't care. I have to work for my house. I have to work for my car. I have to do this, this. Mm -hmm. And they don't get out, out of that. And then you're 20 and you realize, I don't need anything else in my life. Mm -hmm. so it can be pretty scary like what what now like yeah like you realize okay like i can make 10 times the amount of money like it's like it's not gonna make me happy i wouldn't say that there is happiness there is fulfillment yeah but, like there's more fulfillment and then maybe like a little bit of hedonism or something like that but n you're never like uh, like for the whole day <laughs> <laughs> and like even now when i look at it like in the day when my whole day is fulfilled with things to do yeah I i'm feeling good like, yeah there's no like even though maybe at work i had some problems i was nervous or whatever but at the end of the day you go ahead and you sleep and you feel good like uh, so like it's not more of like going for happiness because it's not defined it's different for so every single person i would say yeah for me it's finding fulfillment into every single thing that i do that i can be zoned into the thing that i'm doing and that i that i can kind of escape everything else and just kind of be focused on that one thing sometimes i uh, i get in the trap of like okay well i'm not feeling that great right now but at 
at this point i've set this milestone once i achieve this thing then i'll be i'll be happy and yeah, then but you it's get not, there it's, <laughs> it's more of playing the game you, yeah you, you, you mostly realize okay i'm happy when i'm doing things and that's yeah. where uh, I mean, like, I'm not a psychotherapist or whatever, but most <laughs> most people say, okay, when somebody's maybe feeling depressed, they're kind of, okay, take it easy or like, don't do anything for a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you're going even like, because at some points I, I was also depressed. Like personally, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of kind of psychotherapy and stuff like that too, to go ahead and understand yourself before understanding anybody else. Yeah. Like I was, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to chill or whatever. And then you get into more and more of those problems. You start picking up social media because you're not doing anything mm -hmm. and that becomes your thing. And I feel like at the moment, it's more about finding what fulfills you and how can you maybe fulfill your day with more of those things. It, mm -hmm. Is it going to be hanging out with people you like and just kind of talking with them? Is it going to be working on a business? Is it going to be working out and doing hard things? But in the end, you're going to be, let's say, happy when you yeah. do things and not when you do nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like if you're sick and you're like, yeah, yeah, better I mean, and that's different than yeah. th this is something where like you have to exercise your, your brain in order for it to work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to relax, but I mean, not relaxing with I mean, yeah. like social media. Like you, I'm a big fan of relaxing, but there is no reason why you cannot relax by laying down and talking to your girlfriend or yeah. like and, uh, going outside with friends and just kind of relaxing that way and actually doing things instead yeah. of just being tied to your phone and big program that you think you're relaxing just by doing so yeah I, I don't ever feel really relaxed when i'm scrolling through something yeah because it's you're always like processing whatever's in front of you and everything yeah. like that yeah i mean when i'm relaxing when usually researching something maybe <laughs> i mean like for example recently i'm into jujitsu whatever it's like relaxing for me right now okay I'm going to lie down, I'm going to do, like, look at what they're doing, and I'm going to, whoa, 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 I don't know anything about this. <laughs> I need to be better, and then you get motivated for the next thing, like, you you look forward to the next training, whatever, to kind of figure out what are you going to do, or just kind of researching, maybe reading health books, or just kind of trying to maybe get, uh, like, slowly I'm trying to get away from business a little bit, mm. that, that everything is business, Yeah. and then that you can also talk with people who are not in business when you sit at the table with them, that you're not kind of, okay, we've scaled this, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Specifically to my girlfriend, today I had a really important meeting, but she doesn't care. Like she likes you because of you. She doesn't care that you scaled your business to like I don't know what numbers or whatever. Like yeah. you realize that you in life you need more of those maybe additional things to keep conversations and to kind of to be able to kind of have even more fun conversations with other people. Yeah, it's it's really nice uh, hanging out with people here and uh, talking to people about their lives because sometimes you you never really get that chance. Um, to talk with people who like do similar things as you yeah. uh, without talking about the thing. Yeah. <laughs> like I know sometimes there are certain parents that like they'll go out to eat and they're like, okay, we're going to go out to eat and just like, we're just going to not talk about the kids for a little bit. And then they sit at dinner and they're like, I don't know what to yeah. say to you. <laughs> That's where you slowly have to have side hobbies or whatever. Right? Yeah. I don't know. We were talking to like our future finance manager and he has bees and like over the weekend yeah. he's keeping bees and getting the honey and selling oh, the honey really? as a hobby. <laughs> And they're like, oh, whoa, like that's actual business. Like he's providing something. He's not fighting on the computer all day. <laughs> so it's always fun to get into more and more of those physical things and actual kind of enjoyment inside of that. Um, so if you don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. But uh, the, the time that you were feeling down, um, was that uh, kind of part of high school time where everybody was telling you, oh, you can't do this. You're not going to be anything like you should just do pharmacy. Yeah. I mean, it was like maybe at, at that point I was mostly I mean, really into making the business going to go and grow. So like I would say I was not feeling connected with everybody. I wasn't living mm -hmm. into my own head, but I still had a clear direction. Mm -hmm. But it's more of when like, let's say I, I got a nice car, I got a nice apartment and I got everything. And then I, I was like, what now? Yeah. Like, I, uh, I optimize my business that I, I can work two or three hours a day mm -hmm. and like what to do uh, with all of the other time. Like all of your friends are studying so you cannot go ahead and play around with them like constantly. Yeah. Like not doing anything, you're going to get, you're getting into more depression like on that yeah. front. So it's just kind of finding the tick again that made me tick like with the business and like what I, understanding what I actually like yeah. and getting to know myself and getting to know all my problems which is also like, which was a pretty hard period for me to understand that, like even through like getting drunk a lot, like in, on Wednesdays or whatever, because yeah. you just figure out, I don't know what to do. Okay, yeah. let's call some friends, let's get drunk. And like, you're like, what, like you wake up tomorrow, like every day it was so fun, but kind of what was fun? Like, <laughs> because you cannot sit for the next 10 times, like with friends and talk about the times you got drunk. Yeah. Like, but it's every single time is the same because it's the same club, it's the same people, it's the yeah. same everything. So it becomes boring. So like, 
that kind of period of kind of actually understanding what I actually like and I have to do something in order to kind of continue being fulfilled like was the hardest time for me and it took the most amount of that of time to actually go through that find what uh what I actually like and kind of actually start talking to people because I was also like maybe my depression was more of like I did not talk to people I didn't know I did not know how to talk with people I know oh really like when I'm at like at uh, the company I know how to help everybody yeah but when I need to help me I didn't know to tell anybody I feel down I, I never told yeah. anybody that I felt down or anything like that yeah or like with any of the problems that I had with my girlfriend or anything like that so like all of that kind of piled up into me and I didn't know, like, even when I go somewhere, I was like, kind of like this, like always, like th 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 this was me. Yeah. Like, I did not know how to sit still, like, and talk to somebody, like, maybe like at this podcast, like uh, yeah. a year and a half ago, like this wouldn't, like even a year ago, like this would really? not be possible, I think. <laughs> you think? Yeah. So uh, what what kind of things did you kind of realize that, um, like, I needed to, like, this is why I didn't want to talk to people. Um, It just felt unnatural. Like, why were you different? I mean, it's mostly like I was maybe mostly into my head. So like when you actually start thinking about like I was talking to somebody and I was talking about the next thing I'm going to do like after that, and, like whatever, because just yeah. realizing, OK, like you need to let all of these things out of your head first and talk to somebody maybe about you yeah. so you can actually take any information about like from them so that you're not just like me, 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 me or whatever. Yeah. But I did not talk talk like that deep enough. And then it was mostly like realizing, okay, I'm also a person because I also said I cannot feel like I cannot do this. I need to be better, better, better. If I, if I tell to somebody that I'm not feeling good, they might be disappointed because they rely on me and whatever. Mm. So it was also pretty hard to go ahead and say that. And also, I mean, in the environment, maybe when I was growing up, my, my parents, like, we did not talk so openly about those things. Like, mm -hmm. it was all, like, mostly about, okay, we need to survive. It's not most, like, how you feel or whatever. Like, yeah. it's not how you feel. We need to eat tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. so, it was more, maybe also the thing how I was, was like, uh, I mean, brought up as I was younger, that we were not talking a lot about our feelings that I did not just, that I did not know how to talk about that. If, if there was, like, a, a kid that was a similar age... Um, I'm not a kid. Yeah. This is an adult. Um, like a 19 year old or 20 year old that was going through a similar thing. Do you think there was anything that you would say to them who who was feeling the same way you were? Yeah. So I feel like probably psychotherapy is pretty good. Like it's taboo <laughs> on like many different things. But like when somebody asks you a question, like uh, when you get so filled in yourself, you never want to ask you that because you're scared of that. And when somebody mm -hmm. asks you, uh, like I cannot remember what other word like few of the triggering questions like that were pretty similar. Yeah. And then when somebody asks you, like, okay, I, I never thought about that. Like yeah. uh, what, what, what like and then like <laughs> like with like I think with ten sessions or whatever, I was basically a completely different person. Really? Yeah, uh, because most of those things I pro I think I was probably scared to ask myself. Yeah. And then when you start asking that and when you start processing that information, you actually realize that. And I was also writing a lot, like because going through that period uh, I pull out my phone, like if something annoys me, like because I was feeling a lot of anxious in like in me, yeah. like that everything has to be perfect, everything has to be good, like I have to do more and more and more and more things. Mm -hmm. uh, like I started to write everything down and I actually to, when you write things down and then like ask yourself, like for example, okay, this happened, this is what I'm thinking is going to have, this is what I feel like is going to have an impact on me. Yeah. And like, what's the actual reality? And yeah. then you write what's the actual real reali uh, reality. You're like, okay, like, that's not too bad. <laughs> like, uh, because my brain was so wired, like that at a point if I, I sleep and uh, wind blows, like I was always thinking the worst case scenario. Like I was thinking that somebody crashed into my house, they're gonna rob, rob me or whatever. Oh, really? And that was my, like, you can see like with a s simple thing as that, my brain was wired to be, thinking the most negative way that I, I need to prevent everything like that. So yeah. install security into my whole home, <laughs> like camera here, camera here, um, connected to my phone. I can see everything. So yeah. like, I, I feel like I live into the most secure apartment ever. <laughs> like, yeah, really? <laughs> but I never asked me, why are you thinking about that? Like, yeah. what's the actual cause of that? And like, and I, starting to write things down and understand that you actually start to know yourself, how you react. And then when you re react badly, just kind of, Maybe when you write it down, when you take a look at it later on, you understand why is that and like, what are the things that brought you here? Uh, and then also looking at it, I mean, maybe you had a bad relationship with your father or mother or whatever, mm -hmm. like that you did not talk about that enough uh, with time. So that's what caused all of those problems kind of subconsciously in you that you had to prove to somebody all, every single time because 
my whole childhood maybe everybody was you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it so like even when you make it you don't feel like you made it so yeah. you're always to yourself you need to do more you need to do more you need to do more <laughs> and that's like an endless loop and like i would say a year ago like at the beginning of the year something like that i i'm like february march something like that i went out like with psychotherapy and everything i went out of that loop call and actually found a lot of the fulfillment that is actually fulfilling me and like actually started to live every every single life without every single day without a lot of anxiety and stuff like that carrying yeah. me around and i was a lot more chill like if there's a problem I'm like uh, okay there's gonna be a problem every single day like <laughs> like everybody like if if a team has a problem they're like oh, what we're gonna do okay okay problems happen <laughs> no worries let's see how to fix that let's see the, what's the good thing that happened and then we're gonna fix after that yeah how can we say it and then you start realizing that's life and like understanding a lot more about it that you're kind of reminding me of um uh some people the level of anxiety they have when they have their first kid versus their third kid. <laughs> like, Probably, yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're like, I know what to expect. Yeah. I understand. Like, I don't have to be freaking out. Like, now you're the crying again. You have a fever. Yeah, now we're going to go to the doctor. <laughs> it's not like, oh my God, you have a fever. Yeah. Oh my, the world's going to end. Yeah. What if we don't get there on time? What if your fever gets... Yeah. Like, you're just like, eh, it's fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> But it takes a lot of maturity for that. Yeah. Yeah. I know, like, not many kids, like, um, I mean, kids, like, many people, like, let's say to 30, 35, and then you're, like, really old at that point, like, yeah. I would say, to actually do any risky stuff because maybe you have a family, whatever, and then you realize it, and then you just carry on through life. Yeah. So I'm really grateful that I was able to have that at the moment and that I could uh, actually say even no to things because I was saying to all of the things, yes, and that was actually weighing me down. I'm like, I know. I don't want to go out tonight. I just want to sleep and I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Pre yeah. Previously, there was fear of missing out and actually thinking I could have had fun or whatever. And like right now, I'm just good with myself. And like <laughs> the moment you get, when you get good with yourself, I feel like you're going to grow that much more in the yeah. future. I mean, um, yeah, I, I remember I, there was a summer when I was a kid that uh, I I was really just like fine hanging out on my own. I don't know if I was going through something or something, yeah. <laughs> but I was just like, I... I I, I see so many people like during the day at my swim club or uh, I would see them at school or whatever. Um, I, I think I just went through like a year of like not inviting anybody over and I was completely content with yeah. that. And I remember it freaked out my family so much because they were like, what is wrong with you? Like, are you OK? Are you sad? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm just I'm just happy and content. And I think that, um, it, yeah, it's nice to just like have a foundation of like, um. I'm doing okay. Like I'm, I'm fine. I like my situation. And then other people joining that is a, is a plus it's uh, sometimes I do have the time period of like uh, feeling like you need somebody or you need a companion or you need something. Um, but it is really nice just to like be cool with yourself and have all of this other stuff be a plus yeah. an additional thing. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's, it's so good that you were able to go through that without <laughs> All of the pains that that can cause additionally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's a, like the earlier you go through that phase, the the better your life is going to be. And like, I guess the more success you're going to have yeah. because most people are scared to, to I mean, uh, go against them because you have to go yeah. against you first and then to go through life. And most of people just kind of push that to the side for their whole life and they're never happy about it or anything like that. I, I remember one of the scariest conversations I ever had I'm not going it, to, it, it was like a private conversation, but um, I was, uh, I realized that I was in a job that um, I wasn't growing in, I wasn't uh, enjoying anymore. I kind of learned a lot from it, but I was kind of ready to go do something else. And I was in this weird uh, situation of like, okay, so this is a very secure job. Um, I could stay here forever and be fine. Um, uh, but I started talking to some other people um, at that company and I said, hey, I think I'm going to go. Um, I think I'm going to go uh, do something else. And I thought that they were all going to be so angry at me. Like, yeah. I, thought, I, I really thought that they were like, oh, you're so, um, what's the word? You're, you're so ungrateful. What do you think? is What's wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? And the reaction was actually the opposite. And this is why it was the scariest conversation is because uh, a lot of them said, I wish I could do what you're doing, yeah. but I can't. Like I have this responsibility, I have that responsibility. This person is relying on me. Um, uh, I'm not. At the, I don't feel like I'm at the age that I can change that. Um, but you go do that. You you have fun. That was so scary to yeah. think that you could be stuck in that situation. And you, everybody knows people that are stuck in that situation. Um, 
uh, in the in the U.S. we call them like golden handcuffs. <laughs> like you have this great life, but there's nothing you can do to change your lifestyle or your job because everything is so expensive and so many people rely yeah. on you. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also again like going back. That's perception. Like yeah. that's like when you. I mean, uh, train perception, you're going to get so better in life. Yeah. Because if you set that on paper, like, and you actually put those things, okay, I want to, I'm not, if you put on paper, I'm, this is the worst job ever. I don't pro progress. I feel ungr like, I don't feel fulfilled at my job or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like if I quit, I'm going to get without money. And then you actually have the real world scenario. <laughs> like you realize it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, when, when with everything with life, like if you put it through like four things, uh, like, I don't know how to say it exactly in English, but yeah, I mean, like, if you go through that phase, I mean, writing down and just kind of doing the, the additional things, you realize most of the things are not that bad. Yeah. I usually, I'm usually like you, I usually like, um, I, I over plan for stuff. Sometimes I think that the worst case situation is going to happen. Yeah. Like we always say, um, uh, plan for the worst, hope for the best. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so for the, the job switch, um, I, I literally saved as much as I could. I thought that I wouldn't be able to get a job for a year i thought no like it was all gonna be bad like the world was gonna end i never felt like i had enough savings um for anything like that and then um uh, i told you i'm in like a, a final interview for a job that i want so badly yeah and that was like a month later and i was like okay well maybe maybe i, I was over dramatic yeah, but it, and it, it's also so funny to see i mean in your situation you have a podcast i mean yeah. you can monetize that you can earn from yeah. there you're probably like just by sending a podcast to somebody that can potentially kind of hire you is just going to be that enough to hire you. Yeah. And you create a picture in your head that's like, that's not going to be enough. Like, and it's always perception of kind of what's going to happen in the end. That, and you yeah. were always coping. I mean, we're always like going for the worst. I, I don't know why, but that's <laughs> just how we're wired. Maybe it's just uh, like, I really like learning. I mean, really old history uh, yeah. of people and like, kind of maybe there were animals that are going to eat us. So every, every time when you go through the jungle, <laughs> you had to like, be careful that somebody's going to jump and like eat you. So you be prepared <laughs> to defend yourself. And that's maybe just how we're going for life at the moment, so just with jobs and salaries and pay paychecks to paychecks or whatever. I mean, I, um, uh, I think it, it is always good to plan for the worst because I, I always, uh, you know, like sometimes when you feel uh, self-confidence about something, uh, the thing that, that gives me the most self-confidence is uh, my ability to um, uh, take care of myself in situations where it, it doesn't go that well. So like I had an internship and I saved as much as I could and it allowed me to not work um, during like the first part of COVID um, because I had asthma and I, I usually I was like babysitting at that time and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and so I couldn't work. And so the fact that I had money saved up to take like buy groceries, like I was a college student. So I was like very college yeah. poor, <laughs> which is like a weird thing. It's like you're spending so much money in tuition, yet you're you're like yeah. can't afford groceries. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that was a lot of confidence. And then like my ability to come here for a month um, was like, oh, my God, M, like you, it, it, you it, rock. <laughs> <laughs> go old M yeah. <laughs> or younger M. Because it was, um, I, uh, I don't know, just like uh, uh, some people when when they're thinking about the future or they do certain things, they're like, oh, that's a um, uh, uh, later Emily problem. Yeah. Or that's a tomorrow Emily problem. Uh, not thinking that way has um, I don't know. It just it just makes me feel like, oh, well, wow, the younger version of myself, like really cared about me. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't give me all these problems that i had to figure out now she like solved problems ahead yeah. of time <laughs> yeah i mean like that's also i mean like when you're younger you're not into the whole world and like you're just thinking about how to be fulfilled i mean i was playing games because that was yeah. a fulfillment for me and that's everything i cared about like yeah. just playing out with friends playing games and that's everything versus like when you get older you're just adding a, a million of things into your head <laughs> like a million of potential problems or issues that can happen or thinking that you're gonna need a million saved up yeah in order to live a good life and you actually don't i mean yeah i mean uh, you, you do that in like so many different aspects of life too like uh even even now if i if i think about potentially in the future having a kid or anything like that i was talking with one of my friends and she was like how does anybody ever feel secure enough to do that you never like <laughs> You just do it and I hope for the best and that's it. Like, I, I think you ever feel secure for that, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, oh, I, I, I did want to ask, um, uh, sometimes it's interesting, like as you grow up um, and you start hitting ages that um, your parents were at certain like big points in their life. It's really interesting to think back like, wow, like 
um, my mom was going through this or my mom uh, had me at this Yeah, age my mom or something. had me probably at this age. I think she had me at like 22, 23, something like that. Is that wild to think like, wow, like now I'm this person's age. Um, this Yeah. is a, a life that I, I get to experience and, and she was experiencing something totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like how much more I was able to experience, Yeah. like by my age or whatever, like like just traveling to all of the different countries, seeing all of the different things and gonna be maybe ready to be that much more better for the rest of my life and like that much more fulfilled with everything I do. Like because I was able to see that that many things like at a young age. I I feel is uh, the the most astounding thing like for me. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it's it's um uh when when you think about uh work that you've done in the past to get yourself to this certain point, um sometimes I also think about like uh generations of people before me and all of the um work that like my dad does or uh his dad did or anything like that. Um and also my mom's side, but like just focusing on one. Um Yeah. Uh, it, it is kind of crazy uh, when you think about like, um, hey, like your great grandparent came to this country and like worked really hard. And then the next one like bought a home and then the next one went to college. And then um, uh, it was it's just wild to think like, yeah, there's so much that you can
So like there was that, there were things in Costa Rica festivals that we've done. There were things uh, in uh, kind of in France, like ski resorts that we've done, like in ski, oh. ski festivals, Morocco festivals. Uh, there was, uh, I mean, surf yoga beer, like they they go to surf, they do yoga and they kind of, they have parties. Oh. <laughs> so like there is a lot in of In that fun. order, yeah, surf yoga beer. Surf <laughs> yoga beer, yeah. Like, you wake up, you surf, you do yoga, you go ahead and get drunk. And, <laughs> that's what you're showcasing on the website. So it's always fun to go ahead through that experience. Uh, and I mean, on that front, we were doing a little bit of front end, but they actually started to create their own platform. And that was similar to Shopify's. Mm -hmm. So like on their side, like you, you don't actually realize how much things you have to go uh, and do and create in order for somebody to go ahead and sell the event mm -hmm. because you have to sell the ticket, you have to sell the upsell for the ticket, you have to sell accommodation, like you have to sell the flights, you have to sell the transfer from the flights to the oh, place you're going to get. And those are only five things. And usually there are many more, like yeah. then you have to sell experiences, additional experiences at the event. And like with Shopify or anything like that, there is not a single platform that is actually allowing you to do so. So they actually changed their name ASL, like, and I'm really grateful for, for, for them in having me for that period. But I just realized, okay, I really love Webflow. And if I'm gonna stay with them for a longer time, yeah. I'm gonna have to become either a designer or a developer at their company mm -hmm. and gonna get away from Webflow because they're creating their own platform, mm -hmm. which is amazing and they're doing great. And like, gonna, like they even have a pretty wild website at the moment that they developed <laughs> on their own. So you're proud of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of them. Like, and I'm proud of that, that I was able to be a part of that company. Yeah. Uh, but I, at that point, I decided, okay, this is not something that we wanna do. We ended up kinda stopping doing front end Webflow and then just doing design for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, like first me, and then with time I onboarded Christina. She's our head of design actually at the moment. Yeah. So she is, well, was one of our first employees there. Uh, and then we re realized, okay, it's not so good that we design something and then we don't get it to see it live or we see it live after a long time because it's a standard development process. It's not like in three to four months, we design and develop a website and see it live on the .com mm. and actually learn from that. It's like a lar larger process. We're not in charge of many things. Many things are dependent on the platform. So some of the design things we do are not actually being able to be done because of the platform they have, mm -hmm. uh, because on their side is more of, I mean, the checkout process and all the things it, like that's the core of the, of the platform. Mm -hmm. So just because of that, I mean, sometimes they could not focus that much on designs, but even though they're developers, like they, they found great front end developers, they were able to do like amazing things, yeah. things even with Webflow, but it took like a lot more time than with Webflow, like in the end. So then like me and Kika decided, okay, we we're going to drop that client. We we're going to try to do something on our own, but we did not have enough cash flow for anything. I was basically yeah. all the money that I have, I was giving Kika a salary and like I was at zero, whatever, like maybe yeah. something like a hundred bucks per month again, <laughs> but I knew, okay, we're going to make something because I had money saved up or whatever. So like, yeah. it's like, it was our, a, big, a big problem. And that's, that's why we started to create Buffalo templates and we were one of the first people to actually create templates on the Buffalo marketplace, like before anybody oh, else. Really? Yeah. It was you and uh, Nikolai Bain. Yeah. <laughs> He's the person that I know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. I mean, I was, uh, at that time I was uh, like really focused on us. So like, because we were publishing one template at a month, yeah. uh, one, I think we have 20 templates at the moment. Yeah. So like, it, like wow. you can imagine, like it was a really, I mean, go work, work, work period where basically we create a template every single month, designed it, wow. and developed it every single month and pushed it live. Yeah. Uh, and also kind of that's where we started to do the branding for our website. Uh, we, the good thing is like, we almost, the, our name was something crumb, whatever really? crumb flow, crumb flow was the first name. And then I told to five people and they're like, specifically in Serbia, like, ah, what? <laughs> and like, okay, this is not a good name. So we, me and Kika created a whole branding for a month for that. And uh, like, I was like, okay, scratch that. <laughs> I have a new name and then like i was doing research for fun domains and whatever and then yeah. we found flow.ninja so Ooh. because our domain is dot ninja like in yeah. the end so like that was pretty interesting and that's where we started to create the branding for that and to start started kind of uh creating the brand like that was three and a half years ago like because nah, that that was two and a half years ago because in the beginning we were kind of operating on your com and like make media <laughs> like there was a period of of that yeah and that's where we slowly started to transition to flow that ninja and then to start transitioning everything from my personal brand that I had, redirecting all the traffic to flow that ninja and then to start to scale as an agency. Yeah. Uh, so it was because you were able to find dot ninja. Yeah. <laughs> I found that ninja and they're like, this is a really good domain. I need to find a name that can be before that. So it, it looks nice. Yeah. And then we created a whole branding around that after that. So that's, that was the idea of how we came to the name. Does, does everybody on your team know about your katana? 
You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they bought the, like everybody. Yeah, like yeah. my team actually bought me the katana, yeah. so like they they know they know. I do. I do love. Uh, and also, um, you have uh, um the different levels uh on your team. You have them. In, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in ninja yeah. terms. So we were changing that slowly <laughs> because we thought that everybody knows about us, and yeah. we push job ads in Serbia that everybody's gonna be uh, uh kage or whatever. Like uh, people are like, what? Like, we don't care. Like our meteor junior, like whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we're slowly changing that too. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm pretty sad about that. That we're gonna have to Aww. remove those ranks and like actually have actual ranks so people can identify them. And like yeah. when we're hiring a JS developer from a different company. They don't care if they're Kage or whatever. They care about salary for a uh, meteor developer. Or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's still fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> I don't know. I, so, uh, um, once you found out Ninja, like, what was the whole like planning of uh, all of this? Because, like, I I love the the signs that you have mm. and putting that all together. And I don't know, like, all of the different uh, phrasing that you use. I don't know. It just seems really fun and yeah, lively. Yeah, that's, that's what I try. Like, I mean, at the moment, our idea, like, internally is, like, to create a six-star hotel experience because mm. I really like fancy hotels. And, like, yeah. the thing, when you go to a fancy hotel, the thing that they remember to do to do for you. Yeah. Like, I was at a hotel, like, in Greece, and, like, there's a lady that goes every single hour and wipes your glasses. What? Because basically when you're at the beach, like, and I cannot see without my glasses, yeah, they get either foggy, you touch them or whatever, and then you cannot see anymore because you're at sea and then you went out and you touch them whatever you, yeah, yeah. where you, you don't need to. And like, there's a lady that you remember, okay, all people have problems for that. And then a lady like, like just comes by and just kind of wipes your glasses or whatever. Like there's a lot of those small things. And like, I recently published uh, a video on YouTube for the E-Myth book. And yeah. then he's basically walking through the process of like a really great hotel from the moment when you walk in to when you walk out. Yeah. And that in ways that you cannot actually understand, they ask you what's your favorite chocolate. And by the time when you get to the apartment, they get you the favorite chocolate on your really? on, the, on the bedside. Oh my god. Like gosh. they wake you up at a specific time. They're like kind of ask you a specific question, kind of maybe um, kind of when do you usually like your mornings or whatever but it's a question you never like actually uh, think of yeah uh, and like do you like tea or coffee and like the next morning at 8 a.m they give you tea like up to the door or whatever and give you the favorite newspaper to read in the morning and, like many of those small <laughs> things that you actually need to do in to create a great customer experience yeah. and that's what i'm trying to double down and focus on the most yeah and that's why we hired a customer success manager that's why like we have a copywriter writing every single copy and trying to make it fun I'm like kind of he writes copy like it's it's too corporate like uh, again, <laughs> we are working with enterprises we need to be serious but yeah add a little bit of spark yeah. sparkling <laughs> magic to it in the end a little bit of life yeah a little bit of life like somebody's actually uh, like it doesn't matter that he's vp of sales at the uh, enterprise he's still a person and he's gonna have a great time if you read something fun I, I think uh, I loved the part when you said that um, like instead of like lorem ipsum or anything yeah. like that you were like oh I understand this is probably like the fifth uh, <laughs> portfolio yeah. you've read I know you're probably really yeah. bored hope you enjoy my portfolio yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's basically because of that, but everybody can find something fun and find some hidden gems around the website. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to kind of slowly kind of as we're building our website more and more. I treat our agency's website not as a, some fancy thing as many other agencies are maybe trying to create a fanciest website ever. Yeah. I'm trying to create an experience that somebody's actually using. Yeah. And like we're slowly creating our own platform like for our clients where you can log in as a client, you can manage your payments. Wow. You can see the hours we're using and everything like that on the back end. Yeah. So to actually have a great experience of like all of our clients are sending us messages. Can we please download our invoices? Because sometimes you mm. like they miss it or whatever. Like, okay, that's gonna be one of the features on the to-do list for our platform. Okay, yeah. go log in and you can download it there. And like, oh, that's nice. Like you save somebody <laughs> like 10 to 15 minutes and they're gonna be happy for it. Yeah. So uh, when you think about at least in, in web design and, and like uh, making these uh, sites for people, um, what kind of things can be uh, the, the star experiences? <laughs> so like there's, there's downloading. There's also, I feel like... Uh, easy understanding of like okay so how is my project going uh i i'm want check-ins and things like that yeah so i mean on project management i think we over communicate everything so we're like kind of three times a week yeah we're working on homepage we're still working on a homepage. <laughs> we're almost on the homepage next week next week you might see it yeah and then you feel like so connected you're not worried about okay you're like, okay they're working on a home page because yeah. many times clients don't know what it, how long it takes mm -hmm. and it's expensive and then when you don't hear from somebody for a week what am i paying you for like yeah 
you they get a feeling of what's what's working what's not working we're trying to push them and give them tasks also mm -hmm. so like for our clients okay uh, hey in order to finish the project on time we need this delivered from you on wednesday if you don't deliver that on wednesday the project is going to be delayed for a week mm -hmm. and like okay okay we, now we feel the pressure on our side yeah and they feel like okay thank you for pushing me to do this i, I if you <laughs> didn't, didn't do this maybe we, they would blame us or whatever and they realize okay like it's a teamwork process like if you have time and that's why with most of our clients we say do you actually have time for the website to work with us like mm. it's not something that we can create on our own you know your business we know web design yeah and we need to work together to create this to be good what do you think about uh something i, I discovered recently um uh, kind of uh going through a uh i don't know almost like a workshop with people to understand okay so uh, why is this site happening? Like, what's yeah. the purpose of it? What do you want to get out of it? And like having all of those content discussions before even starting any design. Yeah, that's what we have with almost yeah. all of our clients, specifically yeah. when we're doing design and development. Yeah. Like recently we had a workshop in Bel Belgrade. Yeah. So that was pretty fun to have the first <laughs> in-person workshop for two days. Yeah. So we do did for one day, we did a short design sprint. Yeah. Like we, we, we did all the card sorting and how might we is what ifs and whatever just to have yeah. all the questions and like everybody from the team will like when they start to write everything down just that everything all everybody aligns was the thing they want to do on the website yeah because specifically with bigger companies it can be a problem that uh the ceo and the cto and the cmo think completely three different things and before you align those three people like you're yeah. gonna create a website mm -hmm. and you're just gonna be in a feedback loop in, in like in circles yeah. And here you can reference on our design workshop you said that we want to focus on that let's focus just on that see how it goes and then add additional things instead of uh, we want to do this, 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 yeah. and then it ends up being being nothing. So yeah, yeah, the, the, the workshops are a must. Like we like to call it uh, finding the inapproachable positioning for our clients. Yeah. Because everybody has something, I mean, uh, genuine and unique. I mean, like maybe a feature or something that somebody else doesn't have. Yeah. But even with that, a different company might create a feature and then be the, the exact same amount as you are. Yeah. And then also finding what are your values because like, for example, maybe on Webflow, the values are like they have amazing tutorials and videos like the support is amazing and everything like that and even if a different company had the exact same features like if you have values that are better than the other company yeah. they're gonna go for you because they're like i don't want to mess with their support like <laughs> i just want to talk to somebody on webflow and like i'm yeah. gonna be great yeah so it's also like finding what are those two things and just kind of finding kind of what should we double down on kind of go, going ahead into the, the design and wireframing and stuff like that yeah yeah and also uh, the elements of um I feel like uh, the way that Flow Ninja is, is like, there's the three elements of like, uh, do, do I know you? Do I trust you? And do I like yeah. you? <laughs> and I feel like no and like um, are pretty hard if you don't showcase like who you are and kind of like have that more fun element yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I tried like, maybe I'm over exaggerating, but I'm showing all of our people like on our website, like we have to add even more people because we've grown on, uh, as a team. Like yeah. on our About Us page, like that every every single one of our team members is like here, like it's like on our website, you have his LinkedIn, everybody's yeah. a, a legitimate person who gets all of the benefits from the company and gets all of the additional learnings. Yeah. Because I feel like when you're working with freelancers, I mean, maybe somebody's a real expert, but on our side, we have a design consultant. He's been working like for 15, 20 years in a design industry and we're paying him month to month to educate all of our designers. Wow. Same for like, I have an advisor in a company, like a friend who is uh, having an agency of 80 plus people. We pay for all of the learnings, courses, and everything like that to try to educate all of the different people in our team. Mm. And versus having a freelancer, you're kind of maybe thinking, okay, he's getting paid really well. He's going to invest that money into his knowledge. And that's not the case every single time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that there's so much that that you can get out of just having a, a team that you really, really invest in. Yeah. Because from, from what I understand from like the posts that you guys make about everybody, it seems like everybody's really happy to be here <laughs> yeah, yeah like and like uh, it's also a pretty good thing that everybody is um, i mean everybody's also friends so like, yeah like if, if somebody would love the company like everybody will be uh, not everybody will be happy if he's doing something good but yeah. if they leave for wrong reasons they're like gonna keep okay, leaving me as a friend like you know, <laughs> here alone Aww. but even though that, like we, we're we're pretty lucky that we didn't have a lot of people leaving the company yeah so i mean we had three or four people like i think three yeah only three people yeah. kind of leaving the company yeah one realized he he doesn't want to do Webflow anymore because he was a designer. He came to learn Webflow and then realized he's going to need to write JS like oh. with the projects that we're working. And I like, okay, yeah. this is 
not no code. And that's <laughs> it's low code, maybe high code, whatever we time <laughs> when you start working on more complex projects. Yeah. Which is one of the misunderstandings that Webflow is easy. It's yeah. easy, but it's not. Yeah. So he just decided, okay, I'm gonna go back to UX design and I'm not gonna touch this anymore. <laughs> Another friend, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yeah, another friend, like he was working for a company for a while mm. and they just did not, not, didn't have money to invest in the design anymore. So he mm. came to us and he's, that was his, one of his best friend. Mm. And then they get pretty large funding and then started to expand across Europe. Yeah. So his friend was like, okay, we got funding right now. We need to invest in design a lot more. Can you come back? Yeah. He's like, and I want to stay, but I need to go. <laughs> And then, like, uh, there were a few mistakes where I made, like, a bad hire for somebody that was not just not a part of our team. Yeah. That, like, I needed somebody in a team and I made a mistake that that's going to happen quickly. Mm. And, like, we were just not the right fit. So, like, we just realized, okay, we're not the right fit and that like, somebody had to leave. Like, sometimes it was hard. <laughs> sometimes it was obvious. But that's where I understood, okay, hiring is a slow process. So, like, at the moment, we're hiring for a project manager, jazz dev, and the finance manager. And that might take two or three months. And I'm completely fine with that because yeah. better to spend that more amount of time with somebody. And if somebody's willing to wait three months to come to join the company, yeah. they're good. Versus somebody that is just a job hunter, just kind of, yeah. uh, okay, you're not going to send me an offer by Friday? I have different offers. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I've been interviewing with like 15 companies. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you want somebody who's like really, really interested in you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, even like if somebody's like maybe interviewing in different companies, I completely understand that. Yeah. But sometimes they might want to work for us and they're going to just go, going to wait for our offer and then compare and do this. And they're not just going to be falling for the first offer they get. And that's it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I don't want to interrupt the flow. I have a couple more questions for you. Yeah. How are we on, how are we on time? On time? We're two hours in. Two hours in. Okay, yeah, perfect yeah, timing. Yeah. Perfect yeah. Timing. <laughs> so, um, so I did want to ask you, what is it like uh, working with your brother? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Stefan's your brother, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's hard. He's our head of development at the moment. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, it's pretty easy, but it's pretty hard <laughs> because I mean, uh, I try to be as direct with feedback and everything like that. And specifically, he's my older brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's in, like uh, for the first year and a half, that was never the case. It usually ended up with a fight and us two not talking for two days. Really? Yeah. It's tough for siblings. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Because like when you give somebody like feedback directly on work, they're okay. He means the best to me. But yeah. when somebody's your brother, he's like, kinda, he's attacking me personally. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. He said the same thing when yeah. we were six. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but. We went over that. Uh, I feel I feel like it's also hugely kind of on my side that I understood what's a problem on his side. That like even if he gets annoyed, uh, like I can okay, you're annoyed because you think that I feel that I attacked you for this. Yeah. But I just want this for the company and like just kind of knowing how to use the words and like <laughs> even right now I have to use the words carefully. So, but we just learned to kind of work together with time. Yeah. And we don't have any problems. I mean, I have. One of my best friends, Marco, he's a lead developer for, uh, like, for example, for Upwork. Yeah. We just kind of realized with time there are some, uh, there were some bad things that, that that happened. But with time, we realized, okay, when we're at work, we talk about work. When we're not, we also talk about what work, what what the things <laughs> that we like about work. Not, I mean, you could have done this or this. This yeah. is like kept for the meetings and just kind of continue the personal life as as expected. Yeah. And then in the end, it turned out to be a lot uh, more beneficial. Because even in all of the fights that we had internally in the company, <laughs> not the greatest thing to say ever, <laughs> uh, you can trust all of those people. Like yeah. it's not that you, at not a single point that I had to think about, uh, should I trust him and giving him this responsibility? Because I always know that they're going to be li living up to the, their words or if they don't, that they're going to realize, okay, I did not do this. Sorry, I'm going to do it tomorrow, whatever. Yeah. Like you avoid all of that when you have somebody that you know for a long time. Also, one thing I, I've noticed about Serbian culture, or at least the people that I know, is that arguments are very quick. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I remember, like, obviously, I don't understand the language. So um, when people uh, around me are all of a sudden having, like, very passionate conversations, I think that they're having a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, they, they, they come to me and they're like, Emily, why did you leave the room? I'm yeah. like, well, I, I thought you guys needed your privacy. <laughs> No, no, like in Serbia, like if somebody wants to pick a fight, like 10 people around you, you're going to pick a fight. Like that's, that needs to be resolved right now with yeah. everything said, like yeah. whatever, probably with even more things that, than that you wanted to say. Yeah. And like that's, that's just kind of going to be the flow of it. Do they have um, uh, the, the term like the a compliment sandwich? 
in in Serbia. No, <laughs> no, we were just learning that. So like, that's what we had uh, coachings on at the moment yeah. because we don't have that a lot in our culture. Like you're gonna say what you mean. You're not gonna have a sandwich. You know, we had a great time together, but you could have done this better. Like, yeah. why the hell did you do this? <laughs> And that's it. Yeah. That's what we're learning with time, like that we need to optimize for. Yeah. So, uh, so how how are you feeling after the podcast putting together? It was uh, one of the best podcasts I had. Like really? you, you've, done, you've done a really good job. Oh, thank you. Okay. You've done a really good job in steering the conversation. <laughs> I um, uh, I'm always nervous before all of them, every single one, but it's okay. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, but um, it, like, how do you feel? Do you feel like in the moment and present? Yeah. And slow that, down. Yeah, that's. Uh, one of the things, like if all of the conversations, like, I don't know, like the moment when you switch on and say it's a podcast, I don't know, somehow I I, I connect with a person directly and like, yeah. I get everything away. Like, I, I don't know why is that only on the podcast. I mean, <laughs> like, in the conversations, I'm connected, but you're never that connected when you're in, like, versus when you're in a podcast, I would say. Yeah, I think it's because like there's the you have like a purpose yeah. for talking rather than making small talk. Yeah, like when we were talking downstairs, I was shy, like I wasn't really looking you in the eye, and yeah. and I always have problems with eye contact because I'm naturally shy, and now I'm like looking. Yeah. Eye, I'm so proud of myself <laughs> because like I I um I I always do all of my podcasts over Zoom, and so I like I'm so, I was so bad with eye contact. Um, but yeah, this was a, a big thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for me, uh, like when I'm on Zoom, I cannot go into like we went into two hours and it went yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> on Zoom, you cannot get so connected with a person, like oh, really? so so like get away from all the distractions. So like I feel like 15, 15 minutes to one hour was the maximum I I went on Zoom <laughs> on podcasts. Really? So this is a really good thing to to have. Oh well, I'm glad you had a good time. Thank you. <laughs> I always feel unprepared. I told you because I, I, if I don't know like the names of all of your siblings and cousins, and yeah, <laughs> where you grew up and what elementary school you went to and what you used to do as well, five did year old. Well, did you know? Okay, actually, like my brother and his uh, wife actually work at a company. So yeah, I was wondering because it, it looked like that was her her yeah married her married yeah. name yeah <laughs> yeah. So it's always fun because I mean uh there's a lot of friends technically i mean like my brother's friend works there so and yeah. it's, uh, like it's mostly recommendations yeah. so it's also really good that we have a really tight bond because you also have a responsibility to whoever recommended you and that's just yeah. when you got hired so like somebody recommended me to for this position and like we maybe turn away 50 people because somebody got recommended that work okay we're gonna go with the recommendation yeah so it's always so fun to see when uh, somebody gets recommended and maybe they're bad at the beginning they're yeah. like kind of 10 times hard working just so okay somebody recommended me i need to prove myself <laughs> and they actually learn what i what i needed to learn just because of the culture fit and like all of the kind of things fr from that side yeah good thanks so much for everything for like welcoming me over here and no worries spending... we're gonna we're gonna grab lunch right now so like, <laughs> the day's only getting started well and also even like two hours of your time on on like a saturday you can see like nobody's in the office right yeah. now <laughs> So I really appreciate it. Um, no worries, always. I I can talk with people forever, and like if <laughs> if you would, even though we have a time limit, I would probably talk to you for like another like six hours. <laughs> but you're really good in <laughs> asking questions. So that's <laughs> thank you. Um, and also like hopefully this is the start of of something new, like a big goal that I have is like to potentially travel with the podcast and meet people in person and like go to them. So maybe this is a, a, a start of something. <laughs> yeah, that's a web flow. You can hear this. Uh, Emily needs to fly, fly around the world. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> um, but uh, the way that, that I end the podcast uh, for, for people that are listening is um, uh, I just reintroduce myself um, and tell people where they can find me. And then I'll throw it over to you and yeah. then we'll head sure. out of here. Okay, sure. great. Okay. So um, turning to the camera for the first time in my podcast. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so my name's Emily Giordano, and uh, I am a UX designer and a podcast host and uh, hang out with people who love Webflow um, as much as me or more. Um, and so uh, if you want to find me anywhere or you want to be friends or really anything if you're interested in the podcast and you just want to say hi or potentially even come on um my email is emily e-m-i-l-y at greatdesignlead.com greatdesignlead.com is my website and great design lead is my username on most social media so you just put that in there if you can find me great if not you just gotta find another <laughs> app <laughs> or something like that so i'll throw it over to you and then we'll yep. out of here so i'm Rush, and as i've said i'm the founder of ceo of Flo Ninja. 
And for me, you can find me on YouTube. Like we have a YouTube channel that we're slowly building up. Uh, so as you said, like <laughs> we just got all of the gear and like we're just kind of planning that uh, to kind of grow even more over the years. So you're, you're going to find a lot of tips on how to grow your Webflow agency, a lot of tips on kind of how to actually work in Webflow or just kind of general life tips. Uh, and on the other side, you can follow me on Twitter. I don't know what's my Twitter handle. We're probably going to leave it <laughs> somewhere down below because I don't use it often. Yeah. Or just add me on LinkedIn. I'm mostly active on LinkedIn and kind of that's... That's where you can follow me, ask me all the questions, and I'll be make I'll make I'll make sure to go ahead and answer all those. Perfect. Great. So like everything, you just scroll down, go yeah. in the description, click and go, and everything will be yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. And I just hope this is goodbye until next time. And maybe maybe you'll be in the US or maybe we'll yeah. Zoom or something like that. But we'll do this. Uh, hopefully again. you're in Serbia again. Like <laughs> <laughs> so that we can go and can explore like Belgrade next time instead of Venetian. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, just goodbye until next time, I guess. Goodbye until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>